a pic, Amy. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, like, you know, we have got all My night boobs up. have been really, really tender the last couple of days, and I don't know what Same here, about. actually, yeah. Bro, I don't know what that's bro, all about. It's the weather or something. Bro. I don't know. There is, there is actually, if I just check my nipples, there is a 30% chance that it's already raining. Is it? Well, <laughs> actually, you're, you're not half wrong there. <laughs> they get wrecked honest. because of the weather. <laughs> oh, did none of you get the minger? Yes. <laughs> no, I just, I just thought you had it a condition. Okay. Reluctantly. <laughs> I do. Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> I trying to the ability to, to look out the window. Yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome hello, to everybody. Miscellaneous. <laughs> yes. Welcome yes. to another show. Um, we promise to get better at these openings, but we, we won't actually. It's, that's a lie, completely. No, we don't. No, no we don't. It's complete bullshit. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> that's uh, a lie. That is a lie. That's a lie. So, <laughs> joined as ever, myself, Jonathan, Amy, Foxy. Um, we were we were meant to have Tony here, but he chickened out on us at the last minute. So you know, well, what else can you do, really? He's off getting his fucking rugby fizzy license. Mm. <laughs> fucking nerd. Who does that? Like in Finland? Who fucking? Who, fucking <laughs> who moves rugby? to Finland? Who moves, who moves to, Finland? to Finland just who to play fuck? just to play rugby? Fucking who throws Tony, a shoe like him. ridiculous? Honestly, man, embarrassing. Honestly, he fights like a woman. <laughs> As most rugby players do, apparently. Because <laughs> cast that's just cast aspersions over like, the entire honestly sport. God. <laughs> honestly, God, like I mean, I'm really good at the '90s movie references. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. It's, it, it. it's a box ticket exercise for Amy, really. Like you have to get your references in early, or else you just forget about them. You don't use them up, then you know. So, we had a private call not too long ago, a couple of days ago, and I made sure that every one. Like any statement that I made, I made sure mm. to reference whatever song I had playing in the t- in the background. Yes, and yes, I was right. going to say this to you right now: the fact that I was able to get an Elliot Smith "Needle in the Hay" reference into the conversation, I found that was a top top one for me. There's an art form to that. Yeah, like, like, like did I got very well. I did really well with that. Like I even got don't, I got Blue Oyster Cults, uh, Elliot Smith, mm. Sam Smith, The Cramps, <laughs> Pink, Sia. I I got a lot. I got I got fucking crown the king. I got the lads. Yeah, my boys. The lads, I yes. even got them in it. Plug the boys. Plug the boys. Yeah. Well, crown I, the I king. Did... Stream that shit on Spotify. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I I, I didn't really um, hear that one because I thought I went to gone too fast. But you know, it, it, it depends on which way you look at it. So uh, uh, very clever. Clever. Well, at the work. At the work. Yeah. <laughs> like definitely though. Like anyone that is watching, like please check Stream. them out. Oh yeah. my god, they're savage. Is... They're so good. Well, actually, uh, remind Future Me to uh, leave a link to their music video in the uh, description so we can uh, give them yes. a few. We can tickle yes. their algorithm because obviously we've got such a wide uh, audience base. They, you know, we can we can help them out a bit. You We're know? looking at the twenty-two of you. Okay, there's twenty-two. Wait, uh, of you. Twenty-three. We got one. T- we got one tonight, lads. Yay! At time of recording. And and it's not a sex spot either. Shockingly. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Not mad. Isn't that great? I don't Isn't know if I'm happy or sad by that. I want to have as many sex spots following me as possible. To, to be fair, while we were while I was waiting for you guys to come in, I had just been like fighting off the sex spots on the video we just uploaded tonight. It was like fucking treat them in quick succession, going free sex girls online. It's like no, wrong, go away, shoot, shoot, get, shoot. <laughs> get. Fucking is hell. It because, is it because is it because in the video it turns out that I'm a spitter, not a swallower? That might have something to do with it. Like the algorithm can detect the difference. Um, I'm afraid. So we'll, we'll, uh, ah. we, we'll have to keep that in, we'll have to keep that in actually, mind in thumbnails in the future. I watched, I watched, I watched it. I watched, I literally skipped ahead. Jonathan's like, oh, this is when it happens. So I yeah. skipped it. I literally am laughing at it for like two minutes. And I'm you can just, pinpoint the exact moment when it happens. Ding, 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 ding. There it is. It's very, yeah, because you get like a coke mustache like, for like a second. Honestly, God, it goes. <laughs> Oh, all like, oh, you hear me is just go up my nose. <laughs> no, it's more like it's up my nose. <laughs> the nose. I, 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 can't, my nose. I, can't, I can't speak, but tonsils are sore. It's so fucking funny. It's so good. What we were talking to about there, by the way, is the launch of another series we're doing um, to basically complement the kind of weekend at Amy's type, you know, watch along. Uh, we are going to be doing uh, That's a Lie. No, no, we're not doing porn. Stop <laughs> saying that. 
You, can't you just can if you want. You, but you can't. You have you'll no get problem. more viewers. Work than we away. Will. Work away. Feel free. Only fans is a thing. Bow, you go do that. We. That is the unsexiest thing I've seen all week. I could see you doing that and having the NWO music in the background. <laughs> She's there to do the like guitar. Hulk, 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 Hulk comes in to like fucking steal the spotlight purely because it's music playing. I'm like, oh, do I not? I even get to finish. Okay, I don't even get to find whatever. No, that is the most Hulk Hogan in nobody gets to finish. Wife. He comes in with a co-worker's <laughs> wife and I'm just shoved aside. To be fair, that is the most Hulk Hogan thing ever to hot dog around the undressing woman. To steal her fucking spotlight. It's like, yeah, that's what we want. We want fucking thunder lips in here. Yeah. Brilliant. I have better titties than you do. Uh, <laughs> you, didn't, you, didn't come, you brothers, you're not here. You're not here to see the 32 double Ds. You're here to see the 20 inch. <laughs> the sagging 24 inch pythons. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> meanwhile, I, uh, dangling skin. <laughs> meanwhile, I the bingo wings. That's what the, the people corner. want to see. You're slapping the bingo wings. <laughs> the <laughs> bingo flaps. <laughs> just, just, just me sitting, sitting in the corner, strategically, everything covered, just like this is bullshit. This is bullshit. This is my room. This is, this is even get into my this is room. Pure sexism. <laughs> I thought this was a safe space so I can get my kid off, but no. Apparently, Hulk Hogan has a term for every fucking photo shoot I have to do. <laughs> He's watching you. Brother, big brother is always watching you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, for you, brother. So, in case you don't know from all the fucking in jokes we've done since we launched this channel, that's a lie. Is what we're doing to what we're basically putting the camera up, and we're gonna cap film us watching Beyond Belief Factor Fiction. You have, you are more than welcome to play along at home. See if we, if, if you beat us or not in terms of if that's a lie or not, or better yet, you can just. Uh, watch as Amy cringes at a fucking coke spray fucking mayhem. That was, either way, it's entertaining. That's all I'm saying. You know, because like, <laughs> it's kind of our, it's kind of our palate cleanser from a long ass day recording, getting all of our shit in for the month. And it's basically like, yeah, let's just watch this and just like fucking chill out for maybe half an hour before we all have to fucking leg it for our last buses. So it, it works. I out made it with one minute to spare. See? I made yeah, it to the Lewis stop with one minute to spare. Actually, you you didn't because there was another Lewis after, and that What's came there? five minutes later. Yeah, yes. apparently so. Yeah, because I was oh. walking down the road and it, it just passed me. Mm. No, so, well, it could have been at a service because, though as well. So you know. Yeah, because ev- ev- no, every every stop. Oh, was oh, fuck no way! Oh, well, it's, I still made the Lewis anyway with one minute. Point, spirit, point so. withstanding. Yeah. So yeah, it might not have been the last one, but I still made it, and yeah. my taxi driver didn't get lost this time, and I didn't have to pretend I wasn't from the area. That's also good. That, that, that's, that's, good. A, that's the only thing you can hope for. Um, the other thing, because we, again, we are trying to add as, more con- as much content onto this channel as possible. We have another thing we want to announce tonight. Um, something that we're all very, very excited about. Um, How do I not know what this is? You do know what this is. We were just talking about it 10 minutes ago before we started going on air. Oh, right. Yes. Sorry. I got sorry. I had a legit, I had a legit mental. I actually legit had a mental like block. I'm like, do you not read my notes? Do you not read my notes? Do you send notes? There's, no, there's a joke there, and I'm not. It's no. low hanging fruit. <laughs> oh my Literally. god! For a minute there, I was like, "Holy shit!" The, is there actually a Google Doc that we're supposed to be adding on to each week? No, no. Oh. I, I, I work in a paperless system, which is why our videos are so uh, free flow and elegant and wonderful. And really, all that we're, shit. we're not that professional. Let, let's no, just get that out of the way. I did like I, to be fair, lads. Like I, I did the most like unsexy striptease ever by just going like that. That was not in the script. The only music I can think of. Is there any other like I need to Google sex jazz music? Can you do it in your own right. time? Can you wait until you, we, you like, tell you what you, 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 you just do you. You just do you. Not right now. No. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we can uh, wait, to be honest with you, if that's yeah. that's what you best. Um, anyway, so what we are announcing is uh, we like to announce uh, a, hopefully a episodic uh, show, which is Future Wrestling. Um, She's laughing future, at the idea of it. 
Future Wrestling is going to be a, a, it's a play on the worldwide wrestling RPG system that you can all uh, play test at home. It's not fully released yet, but you can donate a couple of bucks to basically buy the, the source material and play along at home. And yeah, we're basically going to play, do a role playing game. And we all have characters. Uh, we have a setting. We have all that stuff. And we're just going to play it out. I'll give you as a, well, I'm not going to give you a, a few teasers here and there, but uh, once we're kind of close to like uh, to an, uh, to uh, releasing it, we'll uh, we'll show you more. But for now, we are going to be doing our first our wrestling RPG uh, on this channel. So uh, keep an eye out for it in the next couple of weeks to see it drop, and uh, mm. hopefully you like it. Because again, from from the conversations we've had with the, with ourselves and people that we're going to have involved in it, there's a there's going to be a lot to love about this RPG. It's going to be really good. <laughs> uh, I'm excited about it because like some yeah. of the characters that we've talked about they're <laughs> like yeah uh, I, I can't and I can't even talk about it right now because like we have to wait until it actually comes out yeah that's the problem so. you need to because really, for whatever teasers we bring out it will not do it justice as well it's going to be really something so uh, yeah really looking forward to it guys um, hopefully we'll have uh, we'll have something on that within the, with, by the next time we do one of these miscellaneous podcasts and uh, maybe it'll be out. Maybe we'll have announced it, whatever, whichever way it works. Hopefully something will have come up on that one. So uh, with that being said, really, uh, we don't have any other like announcements to make. So we're going to jump straight into our uh, segments that we like to do here, our all other business, if you like. And uh, <coughs> I believe we'll be starting with Amy once she gets... Uh, Amy's very excited. Something's happened here. She's found music. She's found the sex I jazz found music. The great, I, it's, I found excellent sex jazz music, and it is just excellent. But is it I can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use it. <laughs> it's, it's not a. It's not a royalty free. It's, it's copyrighted, so I can't, I can't um, play it. So what I'm gonna do is I, the it. first one I found is stunning because it even has the sex noises and it. it's hilarious. Oh, you very can good. hear the. Oh, ah, in it as well. I'm like, oh, that's literally just completely ripped off a of porno. Very consistent, um, yeah. But no, I'll I'll find royalty free one. Uh, yeah. So, RPG. Whoop whoop. Can't wait. It's exciting stuff. It is. I'm about to bring the tone rate. Right. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna bring the the tone down a little bit more. Okay. And now it's, it's not the top ten sexy a jazz bit, music. Like... Oh no. <sighs> All right. I'm gonna do some top ten clickbait. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. we all love clickbait. We do. Look at how it's called shipbait. I love clickbait. Shipbait or clickbait? Okay, <laughs> shipbait or clickbait? Okay. So, this was actually really hard for me to find as well. I found the other. Okay, so this kind of stemmed from a conversation that me and Jonathan had, where he was literally just playing games, and all I was doing was reading clickbait articles. That's yeah. all I was doing. That's it. I can't find. I can't find the site that I found them on. And I actually had to go searching for clickbait articles and I cannot find any of them to save my life. However, thanks to my trusty Schadenfreuden laptop, Not um, I have found... Cheap plug. <laughs> no, but Please sponsor I have us. actually found... We want, we want your merch. Foxy pointed the sign. <laughs> there we go. Like, in my defense, I, I have a lot of it already. <laughs> I have a lot of it. I, I feel bull- This is the bullshit Not here. I have no sign to point at. Sorry, like, like, like uh, I was showing someone that? else's stuff, but then I pointed to my own sign for my own <laughs> shit and didn't say like buy my stuff. Hold on, you know for sure. Hold on, I, I very hold on. I just realized something. I need to. I actually just realized I need to shill. Hold on. Oh, she needs to shill. Oh, she didn't. She didn't clear this. What? What the hell? Like, what's going on? I suppose she didn't clear this with me. We have to, we have to talk about this stuff beforehand. Like, you can't just do start, start set, doing private is, fucking stuff. This isn't Ray is Shadow she, Legends. Is she setting up like a fucking OnlyFans all of a sudden? Look, come here. Whatever, <laughs> whatever works for her, man. What is that funny? is so questionable. There we go. Oh, that's what it yeah, was. Right. Oh, right. There we go. <laughs> I want free. More, I want more free shit. Um. So. Well, if you were just on camera, you would have got plenty of free shit. I'm not wearing the to... bra to do that. Oh, I had right. to. I also had to laugh because, like, what while while we're doing this, like, my brother is actually sitting beside, and he heard like me say OnlyFans, and straight away his head just like, 
Oop, where? What? where? <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? I love as well. I'm very, I'm very like devious in how I do it because when I move off, then I throw the shirt. So just. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah oh, that's it, why it looks so right. questionable. <laughs> like, whip, whip off, whip off the mustache mountain one to be like, oh, it's a Schadenfreuden shirt. Hey, join the misfortune <laughs> of you fuckers. Yeah, Johnson, so, add a link to the Schadenfreude. Just to, like, they, they're out. successful enough. I don't need, I, I don't need to do that. It's fine. <laughs> because it's like, that, the case, I'll, tag them. I'll tag <laughs> them and just be like, please send me free stuff. <laughs> I stripped for you, you fuckers. <laughs> Not on camera, but the point, the, the, the thought still counts. <laughs> I did it online. I, I wasn't on change. camera at the there time, but yes. yeah, it was a quick change act. But going back, right. okay, so going back to, to my clickbait. So I couldn't find clickbait articles as quickly as it normally, as they would normally show up. I actually had to go searching for some. Hmm. So the first one that we have um, is uh, te- uh, 10 randomly depressing wrestling facts. Okay. okay? Now, I've done a quick read on some of these, and some of them are okay. There is one in particular that is a little bit outdated on it now because it's no longer actually a fact. It would have been at time of writing, all right? So the first one is, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a, t- a totally depressing fact because I was expecting like, well, I wasn't expecting these type of facts first. Okay, so the first one. So in 1999, the WWF tag team titles switched hands 10 times in 96 days hmm. 10 times in 96 days so from July 25th to the 2nd of November in 1999 nobody could defend the tag titles during the entire year the title changed hand 15 times but in less than a 4 month period we see new champions almost every other week so nearly every 2 weeks there was actually um, a new t- title change I don't um, see how what the how that was depressing. Right, that's what I mean. Is that's why I was like, oh, it, it is. It's a depressing re- thing when you think about that because it reminds me of like back in like the eighties and the early nineties where anything could happen at a house show and it was just constantly mm. title changes just to keep people involved. Yeah, but I, w- I wouldn't call it depressing. A, though. Like the thing is, thing. like now, nah, nah, neither would I on it. But it's just it's like that's a fact. So during the entire year, 10, 15 times. All right, so long gone were the days of demolition's 478-day run with the straps. The Alkalites kicked off the historic time with a 15-day run by defeating the Hardy Boys. Didn't last long, as Kane and X-Pac then took the straps from the two and held them for less than two weeks. Big Show and Undertaker then enjoyed an eight-day run before giving the belts to the Rock and Sock, Te- Rock and Sock Connection for another eight days. During this, te- during this time... The Rock and Sock Connection enjoyed a six-day title run as well as a one-day run. So they actually held the titles three times within those fucking periods. Fucking attitude era, man. Here's the thing is, though. So while The Rock may be the great one, he's actually never held a tag titles longer than eight days in his five runs with the title. That's mad. That oh, is, that's mad. That that's is a mad, fucking yeah. fact. It's crazy how short like the title runs were. Mm-hmm. That's, oh, they took yeah, piss, but like, like that's not the tag titles. Like that's honest, God, that's ripping it to it. Um, the second fact of this randomly depressing list: Barry Horowitz had a seven-year losing streak. <laughs> that's fucking depressing. A that seven-year losing streak. Oh man! Right, We're WWE jobbers. Yeah. Okay, this. Okay, this is this is actually this is going to tell you kind of how dated this is. Okay, so WWE jobbers like Keith Slater and JTG have absolutely nothing on Barry Horowitz. On April 25th, 1988, a young and promising Barry defeated Jose Luis Rivera, who himself only had one televised win in his WWF career. Can, one can only hope that he savored the victory as it would be his last one for a long, long time. Most people would give up after losing hundreds of times consecutively, but not Horowitz. The man didn't have an ounce of quit in him. Day after day, beating after beating, he didn't stop. He proved that his dreams do come true when he upset Body Donna Skip on the 26th of June in 1995. It was a roll-up heard round the world. He literally won with a death by roll-up. Fantastic. Um, Jumping Jake O'Brien. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a reference there. <laughs> oh man! He proved that dreams can come true when he upset Body on Skip. Uh, Horowitz went on to career renaissance of sorts. He ended his WWF career with an impressive eight to two hundred and twelve WWF televised win loss record. That's ludicrous. Um, that's. Well, I, I, do you know? What? I would. I'd be happy. I'll be okay with that. I'll call that depressing. 
because like in kayfabe mm-hmm. like to have lost that much like that's depressing so yeah I'll, I'll, I'm okay with that one this one Seamus wrestled more televised WWE matches than Steve Austin I believe that yeah yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Steve Austin, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time from 1995 to 2003, we had the pleasure of watching him wrestle a total of 270 televised matches. Mm-hmm. It took Seamus half that time to eclipse him. So despite uh, debuting in late June 2009, Seamus has wrestled 305 matches and TV pay-per-views. Mm-hmm. Right, I need to find out what the date this article was and it doesn't have... So I'm not really 100% sure as to what time they kind of fix this up at. But yeah. at the time of writing, yeah. this would have been correct, all right? So due to the brand year in addition... Okay, so it would have been when the first brand, uh, when the brand split then happened with WWE and SmackDown again. All right. So due to the end of the brand split last year, the addition of main event Sheamus has been everywhere. everywhere. Sure, Austin had a couple of serious injuries, but his matches were still further and few between. Seamus is overexposed to pain, plain and simple. Oh my god, this is actually really sad on Seamus. There's only so yeah. many bro kicks and fellas a fan can sit through. It's just their way of now shitting on Seamus. Yeah, that's... Uh, this, yeah, it's like, not, hate... just Austin, though. Oh, hold on a second. It's not just Austin, though. We've seen Seamus wrestle more than some of the busy, big, biggest names in WWE history. Eddie Guerrero had 296. Mick Foley had 259. Randy Savage had 196. And Hulk Hogan had 191. Hmm. I refuse to believe that Hulk Hogan had a, only had 191. Motherfucker well, the, was in. Although, to be fair, that's probably true, but he was in every match. Yeah. And he see hot dogged his way into every match. <laughs> yeah, he was just in the background, like, like where's Wally? This, yeah. okay, number four. I'm, I'm not I calling that depressing. That's not depressing. No, it's not depressing. It's not depressing. It's a fact. This one is also, I would say, an interesting fact. Hmm. Brian Pillman was the first cruiserweight champion, Horn Swoggle was the last. Yeah, that's also facts. WWE, WCW's yeah. cruiserweight title had a long and troubled history. While it was often demeaned, it was sometimes fought over by the most exciting men on the, ro- on the roster in breathtaking battles. All fact. Mm. On October 27, 1991, Brian Pillman won the tournament for the light heavyweight title after pinning Ricky Moore and one half of the leg- legendary Rock and Roll Express. Not a bad way to start th- things off. Mm. After a while, the division went away and was later rebranded the cruiserweight title. At the Great American Bash 2007, the title effe- uh, effectively died when Hornswoggle captured it in a six-man cruiserweight open. Seeing how it ended, maybe it should never have made the jump to WWE. Oh, I mean, no, I, I don't. I don't. No, it's, it's a obvious. fact. It's not depressing. It's a fact. Yeah. So we're de- we're one to four at the moment with the shit bait. Yeah. Gold dust can't keep a job. Dustin Rhodes has had a fascinating career as a son of one of the, as a son of one of the all-time greats. He was given a leg over uh, other wrestlers, but he also felt the pressure to deliver. Rhodes has had a variety, a variety of personal problems, which has made him a hard guy to rely on at hard times. Oh fuck off! Very subjective. Yeah. <laughs> because of this, he's had. Because of this, he's had nine different runs with national wrestling companies. As of now, he's had five runs with WWE, two runs with WCW, and two with TNA. He mm. recently made a cameo at, at the Royal Rumble, so maybe he could have a tenth run left in him. He did actually have another run then with WWE. And then he's now left AEW. now WWE, and now he's with AEW. So that's 12, technically. 12 mm. runs. I mean, you could make to be the fair, though, the man had that he sold self-destructive. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm not sure about that one. I'm kind of 50-50 on that one. Very subjective okay. to call like him like kind of blam- blaming him for that if, if that makes sense and saying like oh look yeah. at him no he's so 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 shit like you know that's that's kind of the tone I'm getting from the Reuters just like a seventy year old who's been on Wikipedia yeah, yeah. exactly yeah okay so this one is no longer a valid fact at all but at the time of writing it would have been mm-hmm. only two women's matches had ever main evented Raw. Ah, yeah. On August 21st, 2000, Stephanie McMahon mm-hmm. took on Lita in the main event of Raw. Sure, the main focus of the match was on the Rock, Triple H and Kurt Angle, but still, the match made history. It was the first time we'd seen a women's match in the main event on WWE's flagship show. The second women's match to main event Raw was Lita versus Trish Stratus in December 6, 2004. Yeah. It's been over eight years since, and it hasn't happened. So this was Jesus, 2012. Eight years ago. Fuck me. Wow. Right, so that was 2012. 
Uh, think about that for a moment. WWE has had a women division. They have women wrestlers. They've had 52 shows a year, yet only two of the over thousands of episodes Raw had ended with a women's match. That actually would have been, at the time, would have been a fucking depressing results yeah, yeah Maybe i'm, I'm okay men, with that but for women yeah mm. okay this is i do like this and this is what i was talking to earlier on okay so even sable sable who was probably the hottest run of any diva in the company's history never had a main event match against another female competitor oh and forget women main eventing pay-per-views it's never happened that's why it's now an outdated thing because i know He's yeah at the it's line since. jonathan frakes at the line. yeah it never happened never happened that's a lie Okay, I'm gonna. I have a feeling I'm gonna be pronouncing one of these names incorrectly because it's a Japanese name. Okay. Tensai. 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 T e n s a i. Or Tensai. T e n s a. Okay. It's a Hornswoggle. Okay. Hornswoggle has more Royal Rumble eliminations than Tensai. Yeah, I believe that. Hornswoggle returns again for another depressing wrestling fact as well. His character can be kind of depressing. It is actually kind of depressing. Mm-hmm. Um, let's look at a couple of facts here. Hornswoggle is 4'4 four, four and 142 pounds. Tensai is 6'7 and 360 pounds. Which one do you think would be more successful at throwing another human being over a top rope? You've guessed the big guy? You'd be wrong. Not this time. Not this time. Whether it was Prince Albert, A Train, or Tensai, Matt Bloom just couldn't get the job done in six different rumbles. Somehow Hornswoggle eliminated the Miz in 2008. Well, there's always next year. Again, that's, this is a bloke. Um, just like writing in his mom's attic. I, I'll, I'll, I'll give him this one though, because attic. like, yeah, I'll, I'll give him this one though, because you'd think that like Matt Bloom would have at least eliminated one person as A Train, let alone as fucking Albert. Because A Train mm-hmm. had some sort of steam, pardon the pun. I will still there. always remember A Train fucking absolutely spearing the fuck out of Stephanie McMahon. Yeah, like. Like, like, the guy he, had a decent enough run, like... Yeah. Tensai was, was shite, but still. SummerSlam... This is number eight. SummerSlam 2012 had no wrestlers under 30 competing. Oh, this is the height of the fucking... Um, when they were building... They were stuck in real stag- stagnation with the stars. Right? Yeah, that was that was Not rough. one single wrestler... On the recent, on the, yeah, so this is, so this was 2012, this was written. So not mm, one wrestler yeah. on the most recent SummerSlam Karen was under 30 compared to SummerSlam 28, or SummerSlam 98, which had 12 wrestlers under that age. Val Venus, D'Lo Brown, Mark Henry, Edge, uh, Taka, Togo, Funaki, uh, Road Dog, X Pac, Triple H, and The Rock were all under 30 when that show had aired. However, that paid off for them. Henry, Edge, Triple H, and Rock all became big stars. Uh, Road Dog, X Pac, Venus, and D'Lo all had solid runs as well. Hmm. This year's WrestleMania will only have wrestlers 34 and above in the biggest roles, which will be Lesnar, Cena, uh, Undertaker, Punk, Triple H, and The Rock. Besides the Shields, WWE has done a lousy job at presenting younger talent to fans to latch on to. Hmm. Yeah, so this is definitely, this was after, so this would have been November 2012 then. Yeah. November, December 2012 yeah. when this was actually released. Yeah, I'll give him that one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's, that's a good fucking one. That is actually yeah. depressing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hate this. WrestleMania 14 had 15 tag team battle royal. A 15 team battle royal isn't oh. exactly depressing unless you compare no. it to today. In 1997, WWE basically had two hours of primetime television a week, yet they were able to fill out an entire. Yet they were able to fill out an entire tag team division. WWE now has six hours of TV and doesn't have half as many teams. Team Hell No, yep. Tenzai and Clay, the Three MB, Usos, primetime players, Primo and Epcon make up the entire division. That's six teams, five of whom were pushed as losers. See, sure, see, not every time in the fifteen. Mm. Hold on a minute. Sure, not every team in the fifteen team battle royal was great. Too much Bradshaw and Chains. Oh, Jesus. But the LOD, Rock and Roll Express, the Headbangers, Nation of Domination were at the very least serviceable teams. Being the champion out of fifteen teams is an accomplishment. Being the champion out of six teams is almost out of necessity. So his, his issue here there, back then. yeah, like his issue there seems to be the fact that like there's the tag team wrestling is dead as opposed to like a fifteen tag team battle royal, which is a which is a clusterfuck in of itself. So, like, it's neither the pressing on either count. One is a completely, like, shit, like, match. No, yeah, no, it, the whole point of it is, you know, that's what he says, a 15 battle royal isn't, isn't depressing unless you're comparing it with today's tag team division, which only has six oh, tag yeah. teams. No, no, I haven't. No, that shit, I, I'm actually, no, that actually, 2012, I'm actually just thinking about 2012, WWE wrestling actually legit only had six or seven tag teams. 
That's mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, yeah. That is shit, yeah. yeah. But I don't know if I'd call that depressing. I call that depressing. Mm, maybe. No, okay. I would call that depressing because they had the, they, and they literally did. They actually did book them all as losers. There wasn't yeah. actually, there, it was only a necessity to have one of them as a, as a champion and that was Team Hell No. Yeah. No, no that's fair enough, yeah. Like, right. And people tend to forget that like WWE have hundreds of people employed. Yeah. Yeah, like, actually, come on. Like, and, side. Mm. Yeah, yes. that's bollocks like. So like. This is the last fact. Okay. And this one uh, of, of this list, and lads, I actually do find this to be a bit depressing. Okay, go for it. Half of the radicals are dead, and the other half almost died. That's depressing. Jesus, that's depressing. Chris Benoit, <laughs> Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, and Perry Sarton. So, four extremely talented men who were woefully underused in WCW asked for their release and jump ship to WWF. Immediately upon their, de- their debut, they were booked as a big deal. Fun times didn't last too long, though. While, Bre- while, while Benoit and Guerrero uh, eventually became world champions, Malenko retired early and Saturn fell in love with a mop. Then real life tra- tragedies began to strike. I don't, I'm not laughing at the real life tragedies, I'm laughing at the fact that the he mop. just says, fell in love the with mop. a mop. Yes. The mop. Uh, at the age of 38, Guerrero uh, died in a Minneapolis hotel room. At the age of 40, Chris Benoit murdered his wife and son before killing himself. At the age of 38, Saturn was shot twice while beating up two guys who were raping a woman. At the age of 50, Malenko suffered a heart attack, though he was able to return to work within days, probably because Vince was like, if you don't show up, you're fired. Another stable, which had been struck with terrible luck, had been the Heart Foundation. Three mm. members of the group had, have died. Own Hart, the British Bulldog, and Brian Pillman. Bar- Barhart did suffer a stroke in 2002, and Jim, Ni- Jim Nyhart at the time had been arrested for burglary and contempt of court, and has, <laughs> as we know now, since passed away as well. So, literally, out of the Hart Foundation, I think Brett's the only one left. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Fuck. That's fucking depressing. Yeah, that, that is. That, that, is that, that makes up for some of the shit ones, in fairness. Yeah, I find, find the Hart Foundation one is like. That's, that's fucking sad. That's really like depressing. There, there is a course on the family. Yeah. Definitely. Oh von my Eric's god, them one. and the fucking Von Erics. Yeah. Okay. So that that I'm gonna put that one more in the shit bait. As a yeah, it's half bait. and half. I thought so, but yeah, shit didn't click. Okay. We have one here. Oh my god, this one is like right to me. The top ten greatest mask wrestlers. <laughs> I wonder how many of them have been in my fantasies. Mm, mystery to us all. I was, wondering where that, I was wondering where that sentence was going. Yes. <laughs> Just wait until you see the list, Foxy, and then we can go from there. Depends on what list it is. Very... True. <laughs> <laughs> see, the thing about this is... There we go. Amy just like looked and was like... Oh, oh Jesus. If Mr. America is one of them, can we cancel the list? Yes. Just end it there. Like, he yes. is not one of them. Good, I, good. He's not <laughs> like, I'm actually, I'm actually, bullet. like, you've got Ultimo Dragon. Fine. Yeah. Nice. Justin yeah. Thunder Liger. Yeah. Nice. Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Destroyer. Huh? Yeah. I know, that, that's, that sounds like a sex one to me. Mask Superstar. Yeah. Mankind. No. Yeah, man- Mankind, yeah. Mr. Wrestling. Mr. Wrestling 2. Yeah. Um, Mil Mascara. Mil Mascara, yeah. Um, and how do I pronounce this name? Eliminate himself from the Rumble. Mm-hmm. Great man. <laughs> we pulled a, a Macho Man Randy Savage and just like climbed the top rope and just dove out. I've noticed that there's a glaring exemption on this list so far. Um, I presume Electro is ranked number one, is he? Uh, Mr. Uh, Wrestling. Oh, no, sorry. Ultimo Dragon is number one on this one. Oh. I was oh. Mr. Wrestling is number two. Um, that one was a little bit of a letdown for me because my top uh, Maris wrestler was not on that list. No, oh, is it in my house, is it? Oh, oh my god, no. Oh. Have you seen that boy <laughs> break his shoulders? Holy shit, no. <laughs> Great wrestler. <laughs> I love Lycos, but... Oh, right. Oh, sorry. I remember now. Your favourite mass wrestler is the Irish Dragon. Now I remember. Gotcha. <laughs> Death Wish Paddy Brown. He was a great mass wrestler as well. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Death Wish Paddy uh, Brown. Fucking Death stick Wish, insects. Paddy Brown. Oh, <laughs> we all remember. Oh, well, well. Right. 
Okay. okay. I'm curious about this. Okay. I'm curious about this one. The top right. 10 coolest things about wrestling. Oh, this is a good one. I guarantee it's all going to be shit because it's going to be so fucking subjective. I think it's really cool. There's a lot of women involved now. Please like me. You know, it's so neutral. <laughs> well, Amy's breaking her shit laughing. This is a good sign. Yeah. Lads, this is actually, oh my God. All right. The website that I'm after taking these off is, honest to God, it has to be written by a 12-year-old. Brilliant. This is what right. we're here for. Probably is. Number two. Okay, so the coolest thing about wrestling, I'm going from 10. Written by Jason Adelman. Right? Oh, sorry. I almost like dog in. Independent. Huh? I have to let the dog in. Thank you, Right? Right? Dang, so at number, number 10, at number 10, independent yeah. promotions. Oh, that's, 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 that's cool. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I was going to point out, independent is spelt wrong. <gasps> Oh, why is it with an, like, a, with an A? With an A, independent. Yes, independent. Right. Everyone, everyone makes that mistake. Everyone makes that. All right. Mistake. Number nine, the WWE Hardcore Division. <laughs> hardcore with two words. <laughs> number eight. Jesus Christ. <laughs> number eight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Carry on. <laughs> Delo's springy neck. D- what? <laughs> he, has he, has Look he at the real like- Delo. Delo's yeah, no. springy neck. <laughs> you know what springy means? Number seven. Number seven. <laughs> the Rock's catchphrases. Oh, they're really cool. Number six. Number six. The Japanese buzz- buzzsaw. Tajiri. The Jewy's cool. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I like number you. Five. I you. Number five. <laughs> number five. Edge and, Ki- Edge and Christian reeking of awesomeness. Oh, for a f- oh, oh, in- oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, this is definitely done by like a child. It's not. Number I think this was four. done ironically. This was written. This, okay. Number four. Commissioner Mick Foley. I'm gonna no. give them that one. I I, I loved Commissioner McFoley. Okay, I love the fact right. that his office. I love the fact that his office it... constantly like moved, and he always had the cactus. <laughs> Number three. How Shane McMahon somehow boosts the buy rating of every pay per view he appears on. What? How's that cool? Number two. Kurt Angle attacking the Alliance with a milk milk truck, milk hose, and lots of milk. Doing the same thing that Stone Cold, Stone Cold did two years prior, except with a beer truck, beer hose, and lots of beer. This was written in 2012. Title? That's literally what it is, yeah. It's like milk, milk, milk. Milk, 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 beer, milk, beer, milk, beer, milk, beer. Milk, 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 beer, 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 beer. And number one in the top ten list of the coolest things about wrestling. Can we guess? Oh, yeah, go on. Guess right. this one. Okay, based on everything else, guess what this is. If any, okay. if either of you get this, holy shit! Mm. Oh, maybe it's, like a, maybe it's like a move or something. The coolest thing in wrestling is like the fucking Hell's Gate submission maneuver or something. But I'm thinking 2012 here, right? So, oh no, he's gonna go for New Japan. Punk, he's probably Punk. Right, I'm going New Japan. No, what's going to see in Punk? How the crowd yells "Woo!" every time a wrestler chops his opponent in the chest. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Oi. Lads, we found the ship bait and I'm actually yeah. so fucking happy. Not only did you find the ship bait, okay. you actually hit the bottom of the pit. I'm sorry, I got a good laugh out of that one. I'm sorry. Can we, can we move on now? <laughs> All right. No, I'll do one that. more. I'll do, I'm going to do one more of this one and then I'll go on to the last one that I have. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This one. Oh, okay. This is a top 20. All right. Best gimmicks of all time. Ooh, okay. That's interesting. That could work. Okay. Oh, sweet mother of divine Jesus. Yeah. All right, I'll go. Yeah. Amy's simply thinking like, no, this is not good. I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> yes. 
Right. I will actually, the... Okay. Actually. One, two, three, four, five. Six, Have they defined what a gimmick is supposed to be? Are we talking like old school wrestlers or are like... Do you know what, actually, out of the 20 wrestlers on this one, around 10 of them actually are really good gimmicks. Mm. Like, when you think about it. Okay. All right, so, so we'll start with 20. Yeah. 20, yeah. Start with number 20. We get snap judgments. Gilbert. Yeah. Uh, Slagging off Goldberg. Yeah. yeah. That was good. Yeah. yeah. The King, Jerry Lawler. Nope. Fuck I'm Jerry actually going to agree with that one. No. He's the king of Him. fuck all. Except for being he, a dirty nonce. No, I'm actually going to go back to this. And if I'm dealing with just the actual gimmick, he was meant to be, he was a comedy heel and he played it to perfection. Mm. Mm. Go back I'm and still... watch some of the 90s stuff, which I have done. He plays the comedy heel to perfection. Yeah, okay. For the, for the, for the kind I'm of the new about, generation. We're not, we're, yeah, not talk, okay. we're not talking about the people. We're not talking about the actual people. Mm, on their uh, yeah, fair, fair, fair. Okay. Just going on what the gimmick is. Mm. Gold dust. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, gold dust, yeah. Push boundaries. Yeah. Um, Lenny Lane and Brad Kane as Lenny and Lordy. Never heard of it. What? Neither have I. Steve Carano. ECW. Steve Carino. Carino, sorry. <laughs> Carano. <laughs> sorry. The new Toyota Carano in uh, yeah. you're the thinking Mark Carano. version. You're thinking Mark, Mark Carano. Carano. No, no. <laughs> yeah. The Grim Reaper. Um Lance Storm. Team no Canada. Storm. Team, Team Canada, Canada Lance Storm. Lance yes. Storm. Yeah. Yes. No, that's why that's why I mean he has actually he this one is actually in, in brackets, the Team Canada mm. version. Yeah. Okay. Kane. Yeah. Yes. Kurt Angle as the Olympic hero. Yeah. <laughs> Great in that role. Yeah. Devon Storm as Crowbar. No. 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 I'm kind of half now. Mick Foley, uh, Cactus Jack. Yeah. 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 Cactus Jack was fucking serious. Uh, Brian Pillman as the ticking time bomb. Mm, yes. That was very good. Oh, uh, Luke definitely. Bannon, Paul then, yes. yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Best. Sting. The Crow yeah. Sting. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, uh, Crow Sting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, where though? Well, either one, to be honest, was great. So. Matt Bourne as the evil Doink. Oh, Doink, yes. Yes. Doink is, has to be up there. At very least top fucking five. dark. Yeah. Very Honestly, dark. God, still scares the crap out of me. Mm. Vampiro. Vampiro. All right, I'm not sure about that one. With your grandma. Uh, it, his his gimmick really applies to Mexico. As mm. Definitely. Was, so like it, it didn't it's, hit. It's, I think it's yeah. In America, it really didn't. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. No, it didn't. Uh, uh, I will mean, actually I, point no this out. That. He actually. He. This is kind of like I think where he was really a miss one on this one because he was actually used on Wrestling Society X. Yes. A lot. He, and it was like for the MTV generation, it did not hit at all. No, we had him for um, Irish Whip back in the day. You fucking did too. Shut the fuck. Yeah. you did. Yeah, he, he faced Seamus. Oh, yes, and a gym did. wars. A yeah. gym wars. I I remember hearing about oh. that. <laughs> all I heard is remember that, <laughs> <laughs> Mister Henning, Kurt. Or sorry, Mister Perfect, Kurt Henning. Absolutely oh, yes. yes. Absolutely yes. One of the best characters. Of that generation. This one, I, I'm not going to lie, this next one is actually probably one of my favourite characters of all time. The Million Dollar Man. Oh, absolutely. Good God, the best cartoon villain you could ever ask for. Such a fucking natural as, as He's well. that, that's... Okay, he's the star of the top five, okay? So the Million yeah. Dollar Man is number five, right? I Mick think Foley's making a second appearance. Mankind. I'm going to... Mankind, Mankind as or... number as number four. All right. Okay, this top three. So, who do you think number three is? Uh, Probably Stone Cold. Undertaker no, number three. Undertaker is number three. Wow. Okay. I, 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 I would have I would have penciled Taker for number one, but no, Taker's hmm. not number one. He's number three. Interesting. Number two. 
When was this written? 2015. I want to um, say Triple H. No, Triple H does not make an appearance on the list. Um, you see, I want to say I want to say Broken Matt Hardy because I think I'm, but Sean. I think I'm off kill off my time. Matt Hardy and Sean do not make an appearance on this yeah, list. Number that. two is the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Yeah, okay, we'll give him that. We'll give him that. So The Rock is number one. The Rock is not number one. He does not make an appearance on this list. Hmm. Like in terms of gimmick, like mm. I don't know how you fucking top Undertaker because I would have pegged him for the top spot. Yeah. In mm. terms of gimmick, like. But if we're going back as far as Ric Flair, it's gonna to have to be something of the same ilk. So if unless it's something like, I, I my instinct would be Hulk Hogan. But although your could be could have been McMahon. under the giant as well. This is yeah no. McMahon as a heel. No. No. Bret Hart. No. I would not be happy if Bret. Oh, it's not Cena, is it? List. No. Thank Grant. Okay, I think got that sorted. Um, Number one on the list Hulk Hogan. was Stone Cold Steve Austin. I said he was number three. Uh, mm-hmm. you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clever bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Technicalities. <laughs> so I, here's the thing is, I technically told you who number one was. You did. You yeah, did. You, did, you, did, you did tell us. And neither of you went back to, to the well. Foreshadowing. That's actually an all, yes. okay. That's actually an all right list. The only one there that we don't, don't really agree with is Vampiro. Vampiro and the two at the end, uh, two at the bottom of the list. No, uh, no, yeah, them. so at number 17, and Joe's actually really, he was seven and Lenny and, Lo- and uh, Lord, Lordy are number 17. So we don't agree with the seven ones. Good. Yeah, that's fine. The rest that's a nice pattern. Actually, I'd agree with that list. Yeah. Seven is not the lucky yeah, number. No, it is not. I'm going to do my last list. Mm-hmm. Okay. This was actually entertainment.ie. I found this one. Right? Mm, okay. It's the 10 greatest wrestling matches of all time. It's a bollocky list because it's only WWE and one WCW match. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take the greatest wrestling matches of all time with a pinch of salt, considering it leaves out every single promotion and not one OTT match made it to the top or DCW one for that matter. Naturally, <laughs> I can't believe no one remembers working class German versus Lycan from the Championship Chase. Like what the fuck, man? That that thing was what a the was, like? was a classic. <laughs> I'll be honest. Had like, if if or it like wasn't Space Cadet versus Galligan, yeah, that was a classic. Like instant right? classic. If instant there was do you know what really annoys me? If it wasn't because it was between redacted and redacted, there was one. There is a progress match that is legit. I think one of the greatest matches of all time. Yeah, but it's I get between that. two sufficiently cancelled wrestlers, which <laughs> I can't like name what it is. Yeah. People might guess. I, I mean, I've told Jews what it is. I've actually mentioned it to you, yeah. too, and it is one of the matches that I would, I actually used to watch it like constantly over and over again, just because of how fucking good it was. Yeah. But it's now, you know, Ruined. gone forever. Or yeah. on the WWE Network at this point, it's actually probably on the network. It is actually on the network. Yeah. Care. Seems to be. They don't care. So number ten, The Rock versus Mankind in an I Quit match. Yes. Yeah. Right. What was considered to be one of the most violent matches in wrestling history, Mick Foley took a whopping 11 shots of, of a chair to the face by The Rock. Mm-hmm. The match was documented shots. as part mm. of yeah. The match was documented as be, as part of Beyond the Ring, which showed Foley's real life wife and children watching the match from ringside. The kids, unsurprisingly, were stricken and panicked when they saw their father been beaten over the head with a steel chair. Why would you bring your kids to that? <laughs> <laughs> Unsafe work environments. <laughs> Number nine, Bret Hart versus Yokozuna at WrestleMania nine. Ah uh, no! Stop. And yet somehow this is brilliant. And yet somehow Hulk Hogan won. Amazing. Oh, okay. <laughs> they it's actually have it. One. Yeah. Number eight, Triple H versus Cactus Jack Royal Rumble two thousand Street Fight. Yes. Yes. We just think we remember that. seeing this on Channel Four in the middle of the night, and the sight of Cactus Jack getting a face full of thumbtacks made us all nearly hurl. It kicked it up a notch. Mm. <laughs> okay, number seven: Undertaker versus Kane, the Inferno match. I loved it. That was great. Crying. This you is in all that. caps. This is in all caps. They set the ring on fire, on actual fire. 
Come on, what like, else if you're if, if you're watching like, at the time, what, what, you're going hold on. amazing. No, I have no I have no qualm with that. I enjoyed that match immensely. What why the on actual fire? What else are they gonna fucking set it on fire with? LED lights. Like <laughs> what else is there? It's actual fire. <laughs> How do you fake fire? It's not a fucking CGI. Right. The only non WWE match on this list. Six, Team WCW versus NWO Hollywood versus NWO Wolfpack WW, or WCW's fall, for, uh, fall Brawl War Games. We'd have killed to have been in the room when this match was actually being pitched. Sure, it was ridiculousness of the early noughties wrestling. Someone actually let this go ahead. Eight men entered a three-tiered cage of four teams of teams of four with the World Heavyweight Championship hanging above the final steel square. Throw in a few bolt cutters, some ladders, the old acoustic guitar, a smidgen of kendo sticks, and you've got a stew going. God bless you, Monday Night Nitro and WCW, you idiotic gimmicks. <laughs> you idiotic gimmicks. <laughs> this person does not like WCW or Hulk Hogan. <laughs> like, that's what I'm getting off I'm still going to put number one. I put one, get one show on the list, though, you know? Just to get some representation. Right? Number five. Jake the Snake Roberts versus Macho Ram Macho Man Randy Savage, the time the snake bit Savage. Oh, I don't know. It's an I... iconic moment. Oh, no. I match. fucking no. love this feud. I love this feud. Fine, it's not really a match, but it was pretty horrific all the way back in the early nineties, and it's still bad now. An actual yeah. snake defanged and depoisoned, biting a man on TV <clears throat> will never recover. All right, fucking Peter, calm down. <laughs> Number four. Do you know what I've noticed about this one? They'll do a match and then they seem to throw in like a curvy, jokey one and then they'll do a proper match, right? So, yeah. for example, number five is Jake the Snake, Roberts and Macho Man Randy Savage, the time that Savage got bit by the snake, whereas number four, it's Razor Ramon versus Shawn Michaels in the first ladder match. Yep. That was a good very match. Yes, yeah, so it was very Who didn't love it when Shawn Michaels was heel? I don't know. There's something seriously wrong with those people when they don't like Shawn Michaels as a heel. And he didn't have the best theme music ever. And didn't he have the best theme music ever? Yes, he did. He is still a sexy boy when I don't recall him as shaving his head and gotten older. He is still a sexy boy in my mind. There isn't a wrestling fan alive who doesn't know the words to sexy boy. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. When I'm singing it. Looks. Uh, no. That Demon drives Christ. the girls while I got the move. I'm ready to move. Okay. Oh, we need to cut <laughs> off. And let Amy yeah. This yeah. match, however, was pretty... Okay, this... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> this match, however, was pretty... <laughs> His match, however, was pretty revolutionary. That was it. Full steel ladder. It was getting the belt off. Uh, that was getting belted off Ramon's back. In fact, the match is why we're probably scared of ladders. No, it's not. It's because it goes up to a great height. That is why I'm scared of ladders. Yes. Number three. Mm. Number three, three. Hardy Boys versus the Dudley Boys versus Edge and Kristen TLC. WrestleMania 17. Yeah, Tables, I'm lettuce, okay with that. Oh, TLC too. Yes. Yep. It yes. seems so obvious now, but until these tag teams came along, the world was deprived of all TC or TLC goodness. <laughs> I don't know. Apart, I'm pretty apart sure. from the PCL, apart from the band. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure someone... there was some serious. I'm pretty sure back in the fucking 90s there was like an, an early 90s that there was TLC going around in the world. Tender loving care, guys. Yeah. At WrestleMania Clearly someone 17, wasn't chasing waterfalls. Oh, it's, this person was sticking to their lakes and the rivers they were used to. Absolutely. <laughs> Didn't stick to the rivers they already knew. Yes. <laughs> Clearly, guys, we, we are no scrubs. No. Uh, at Wrestle, <laughs> at WrestleMania, Very good. At WrestleMania 17. Jeff Hardy simultaneously put two men through two tables, Edge Spirit Hardy from the top of the ladder, and somehow neither of them won. Fix! <laughs> Don't tell them. Don't tell there. them. Don't tell them. Number two. Oh, another one from WrestleMania 17. The Rock versus Stone Cold. Yes. From yeah. 17? The double turn, yeah. Right. yeah. Yes, but I preferred 19. 19 was better. Another one for... Uh, this I I'm not gonna lie. When we were doing the watch graps, this was going to be my heel turn, face turn because I had mm. both. Yeah. 
Uh, another one from WrestleMania 7 here, as every young wrestling fan's two favourite stars faced off in a good old-fashioned no-DQ match. Long story short, The Rock gave Austin a stunner. Stunner gave him a rock bottom. Vince McMahon was there for some reason. At the end, he became a pal with Steve, helping him win before they shared the beer. It was all too much for our little brains at the time. We still can't forgive the rattlesnake. No, I've pretty much forgiven him for that part. I haven't forgiven him for being a wife beater, but I mean, the rest of it is okay. Yeah. Okay, number one. Uh, I've got two thoughts on this. I'm not too sure, right? My first, I, I think it's going to be a Hogan match, right? So I'm thinking it's either going to be Andre or Savage because it seems to be the kind of theme the guy is going for. He you go. Did I, did I get it? Hogan Savage? Hulk, I get Hogan. Loads? Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like that, like... And the only... The only comment that they have, that the only comment that Brian Lloyd has given on this, this was only done a year ago, Hulkamania, truly and honestly, running wild. That was it. Like, like for all the purposes, the match is really bad. But the match isn't what's important. It's the, the fact match that Hulk Hogan shit. slammed Andrew the it's, Giant. That's what matters. Yeah, it's the moment. Yeah. yeah. It's like, holy shit. It's like, that happened. You know, what's funny? I was... um. I was going back on my, my OSW binge, mm. my OSW review binge even, and I for, I actually completely forgot that they do the Lex Luger um, story arc yeah. from the Lex Express, <laughs> and like basically them trying to, yeah, and it's really funny because they had the moment of Andre, or of Hulk Hogan body slamming Andre the Giant, and I'm like, yes. it, it is a visual that you're kind of like, holy shit, he did it. And then you go to the Lex Express when they had him do the body slam onto Yokozuna. Yes. It just, does, it, just, it just doesn't hit the same way. No. And I'm like, no. it's really funny because, my God, they try, like listening to, to OOC when he's like just declaring like his absolute love for Lex Luger. It's, it's adorable and it's like, it reminds me of me <laughs> and just like of my love of like shitty wrestlers. Yeah, and I'm like at least I'm not alone in the, in the type of love that I have for like the shittiness of re- of some wrestlers and stuff, and it's fine and it's acceptable. But Jesus Christ, like it's just not the same. No, like that <laughs> Lex levels. Express needs to there's be levels. Awesome. Like, I actually think he needs oh, to be like oh, someone oh. needs to sit him down and talk to him and just be like, what is it about Lex that you seem to love so much? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a I Michael May principle did. where like you you started off as an ironic <laughs> fan, but then suddenly you're like, oh wow. Well, I, I don't think he was like, ever. I don't think there was ever irony in this at all. I actually think this is... That's what I'm saying. Like, you, you think it comes from a place of irony, but you've actually gone all the way full circle to be an actual fan of him. Like, it's... Maybe it's a Luger thing. It's like, oh, look, this guy's... Oh, I was like, oh, actually, you know, there's something about him, you know. Well, that's my top ten. <laughs> okay. That's my, my top ten clickbaits. Now, a relatively um, shit bait there, I think it's fair to say. The, 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 yeah. the last two rescued it. Number three, we're going to have to have words about. <laughs> um, yeah, that, 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 yeah. Yeah. Clickbait or shitbait? I think, so, are, are, are we on to, I, I, I think, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I mean, like, that last, that uh, entertainment.ie one, which was actually done sincerely, I think, does save it a little bit. Yeah. Because I'm not going to lie, that fucking, the, the macho man, Jake the Snake feud, I love that. Mm. I actually, I genuinely really love that food, and I think it's like bearing in mind that was nineteen. I see that was the wedding. What year did they get married? Ninety three. Was it SummerSlam ninety oh. three? Liz, Liz that and Macho Man got married. Ninety four. So based in time, mm. so I would have been four years old when that shit was going down. Yeah, that terrified yeah. the hell out of me. Mm. I, my little four year old brain was not able to process this, and it, it was all real to me, damn it, <laughs> back then. And Evil Doink um, uh, was. The, well, Doink himself is actually probably was one of the main reasons why I was terrified of clowns, and then Stephen King cemented it when I was twelve. So I mean, yeah, we're here, we're here for it, guys. Why do I feel like James <laughs> Corden all of a sudden? Yeah, we're here. That's it. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Just whatever, but, you, whatever feels natural for you. So Foxy. But on that note, like basically, like that transitions into my segment. Okay, I'm gonna and... get comfortable for your segment. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking forward to this one. <laughs> So my segment essentially at the moment is the working title book a show. Right. And now what I have planned is that 
I, I've told the other two co-hosts here mm-hmm. that they have to... <laughs> she's very excited about this one. She gets a fantasy book. It's great. Uh, or is it or she's going for the thumbnail again? <laughs> so essentially, oh, hold on a second. You said fantasy book. I thought this was fantasy fuck, no? No. It could be. You misread the note again. <laughs> I really need to read that Google Doc. You really have to pay attention to it. Like, you know, whenever you're ready, like. So essentially, like, I've, um, I've challenged my two co-hosts to book a wrestling show, an mm-hmm. Earl Irish show. All right. Now, the, well, basically, they're allowed one import for mm-hmm. their show. Just one. one. Gonna... So they have to use it wisely. <laughs> now, this can include, be a tag team. So, like. We can. Right, Yes. Oh, shit. Only a tag team. Mm. Like, actual, like, two people. Yes. Not a okay. six-man. They booked as a team. Not a faction. Yes. Yes. Okay. If, okay, if we're doing it on this one, doesn't matter if the rest are, like, it's a fancy book, and so it can be someone who was retired. Because technically, technically, he is still in the wrestling business. He's still involved. Now, obviously, like, they, they, they have this... They have a they have an import card to play, but mm-hmm. I whatever they plan out and say out loud, I'm basically gonna mess with each and every single match. So that's the fun I get in it. All right, where like I give them caveats to every match. Okay, I want. You, okay, so who, who wants, wants to go, to go first? first? <laughs> uh, Jonathan. So, well, 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 give us structure here. Are we are we talking? I presume we're going like well, like a traditional like. A seven match card, let's say, like a your typical six to seven. Right? Okay. Mm. Six to seven. Realistically, like... six. But if you have a good seventh, then yeah. Mm. Okay, so if we're gonna go for a kind of a relatively solid opener. I think I'm trying to think now. I want to go for something relatively athletic. Uh, no, I think I'll go for. I think I'll go for a nice like. Uh, technical base to start off. I'm going to go with Michael May uh, versus... Now, okay. Are you going to treat Charlie Sterling as an import? Considering that by this point, he's pretty much been naturalized. We could, do, we could declare him for Ireland at this point. I'm nearly sure he has an Irish passport. He just hasn't like, told us yet. Yeah, like I, I, I feel single like... Every time I could... we chanted, where's your passport? He never... Like, you know, like for all we know, it is still an EU one. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> I... I'll treat uh, Charlie. Uh, he gets his pass. Okay, so yeah, he's the right. So I, I'm going to go to start off Michael May versus Charlie Sterling as our opener. Okay. I actually want to see that match. So. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously that that's your first match. Uh, it's a turtle on a pole match. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Damn it, Amy. Every single time. <laughs> right, what's the curveball? What's, what's my curveball for next match? <laughs> well, we... So, like... Actually, that's a solid... That's a good opener. I actually mm. wouldn't mind seeing that myself. Just just, mm. just give her a second there. She's fine. I think I'll give you a pass on that one because that's actually a match I really like. Okay, so I get a free go. Fair go. Free go for so, next one. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. If I if I really like it, I'll give you the pass. But if All I right. think of like a good caveat, that'll come in. Mm, so. Okay, cool. What's your second match? My second match. Okay, I thought you were doing turns. Um, yes. Mm. Okay. Oh, will we do it in turns? I, I, I was doing turns, turns, turns so I could think of my second match. <laughs> 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 so, Amy, okay. your so first can you, match. Can you match my opening? Your opening. Um, see, I'm I'm more drawn to to the comedy aspect mm. of of starting a match. Um, so I would probably go with. Hmm, oh, Jesus, this is actually quite hard. I got yeah. I, I like I want to get everyone kind of laughing and joking about things, like you know, get them all into the mood. So mm. I'd probably go with Club Tropicana. Okay. Mm-hmm. Versus, oh shit! No, I don't know if this would actually work. But I'd like to see uh, Trump Clapkana versus um, 
Oh shit, what the fuck were they called? What were Justin and Logan called? Uh, oh, the Gentleman's Club. Yeah. Then yeah, I'd like to see Club Tropicana versus the Gentleman's Club. Mm. Mm. That's actually Opener, a good Because well. I know that we're... I think... I like the way that the lads would just like take it far too seriously. And Club <laughs> Tropicana would completely derail the whole fucking mm. thing. Yeah. And there's so many gifts available. So that, that's my opener. Club Tropicana versus the Gentleman's Club. Spanking. Hmm. I think I, I'll throw like a weird caveat onto that one. So one has to leave. And, uh, sorry, one team has to split. This is going to be. I'm going to split up uh, Club Tropicana. Ooh. Oh. All right. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. What's your reason? What What's your reason for it? Uh, I think Sexy's gonna get like two. Sexy's gonna turn Shawn Michaels on the whole thing. He's gonna get. He's gonna turn into the Shawn Michaels heel. They're persona. gonna re- recreate the barbershop instant. Exactly. He <laughs> is going to fuck a a like oh, through a window or something. He's just like gonna super kick him through a window, and it's just, the two of them will have to feud. Mm. I want to see it happen. <laughs> I want to see if Aiden really is the Marty Gennetti of OTT. You're just throwing a poor bass at a curveball. Like, what are you doing? Oh, Jesus. So, with that. Admit it, you would all fucking love to see that heel turn because it would break everybody's head. Yeah, in, in, yes. fairness, in fairness, you do read the point there. You do read the point. Yeah. Hmm. Now, we go on to match two. Yes, match two. So. Hmm. Now you've had the solid opener. Why are you gonna do the either add to it or calm people down? What are you gonna do? Um yeah, I've kind of mulling a few things over here. Um mulling a few things over. So I think I'm going to go with a, a, the women's matches, right? You know. Oh, uh, I'm going women's match as well for my second match. <laughs> so I'm going to go for a elimination match, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Four-way elimination match. I'm going to go for Valkyrie, mm-hmm. uh, Amy Alonzi, mm-hmm. uh, Katie Harvey, naturally, and then Raven Creed. And my kind of mindset would be that, like, uh, it kind of, like Valkyrie would kind of be, like, pay, like, be kind of focused here because I'm thinking, like, kind of current heel, bitchy Valkyrie. Uh, and then, like, kind of alert, like everyone else is kind of like, so it's like it's a, a three face, like one heel dynamic. And then, like, Valkyrie would kind of like be look like she's kind of like um, on the back foot all the time, but she'd kind of be sneaking around the place a little bit, trying to like be elusive. Well, then someone like Raven Creed maybe might try and sneak a surprise on, on Harvey or on Alonzi and vice versa. And then that's when Valkyrie, Valkyrie kind of picks the bones a bit. So it's kind of like, it just like it seems the match would be the the story would be like the, it seems like a, a foregone conclusion that like Valkyrie's getting knocked out, but she still somehow keeps like surviving for like circumstances. So I'm gonna go for an elimination four. I imagine that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, here's what's gonna mess you up. Take right. Valkyrie over. Take okay. Valkyrie out. Okay. Replace. That's, that's, oh, okay. I'll replace Valkyrie with Debbie Keitel. Easy swap, easy swap, prick. easy swap. Exact same role, exact same ending as well. I, like I'd, I'd probably have the same way. I think that one would work better. I, I, I think like uh, Debbie has an ungodly amount of charisma to mm. really pull that off. Yeah. So no, I think, I, think yeah. I'm, I'm. I, I like that. Right yeah. Amy. My one was also going to be my women's match, but mine was going to be a number one contenders match. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it was going to be Debbie Keitel versus Katie Harvey versus Raven Creed versus Valkyrie. Hmm. So four way as well. Yeah. Let's mm. take on Sammy Jan. And I also want to give Foxy a break and have a special guest referee. Unfortunately, You're not hitting Chris Robertson again, are you? For fuck's sake. 
happens every single we time. never had Chris Roberts in thank you very no, we, much I we, want session we, we Martina as a special guest referee because <laughs> 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 you can just see how fucking frustrated everybody would be getting with her because she's yes. literally pulling a foxy and missing every single thing that the heels do <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that one. I'm not. I'm not going to put a caveat to that one. I like Ooh, nice one. Is is this the meta game? Is like to see like how many things pass the Foxy QC? Is that the idea? Like, <laughs> I think passes, so, yeah, it's passes. A, like, all the while he's just writing down like suggestions for Joe to bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Mm. Oh God, to these great fair, ideas. To be fair, I remember seeing a keen video where Session Rock came out as like a nun in his video and then all of a sudden at an OTT show she was the virgin ma. So like to be fair, either art imitates life or somebody was like, I think you should do that. <laughs> and he agreed, yeah, we should do that. No, well, yeah, but fair, like that, that will be the recurring like ongoing thing. To see yeah, how many yeah. of them actually impress me enough Happen. that I don't want to change it. Okay, mm. all right, so okay, so far, like so far, yes. so far we've won each, mm. yeah, we've won each, okay, okay, all that's right. good. Well, that's John, the next okay. match before intermission, yes, thanks to uh, Amy talking away there. I finally like made up a match card and like I'm starting to like the look of it now a good bit. Fucking so, prick. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going on the fly with it, you're okay, like, that's good, that's good, yeah. You're 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 doing the DCW book, and I like it. Um, so yeah. uh, I'm gonna go for a hostile. I'm, I'm doing w, I'm WCW right now. I'm changing it as as we're as we're shooting the show. Yes. So Foxy, uh, are we using retired wrestlers here, or can we like can we kind of like people who are active, or can we put people who like are in the Irish realm? Let's say. Uh, preferably, like people that are still active, but can be still um, used. If you know what I mean, like. Recently yes, they can still be used. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we can pitch it then. Okay. So like, fine. if they are retired, if they are retired from wrestling, they can be used for other roles. So they could be a manager. They could be mm. like yeah, so on be a and bit so forth. Fluid with it, so yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm sensing a, a Kings of the North type booking with Donkey here. So. <laughs> and no, I'm not going that way. I'm going for a horse battle, right? Because we all love a horse battle. I, I at least I certainly do. So. Uh, to get maximum meat into this match, I'm going to go for a triple threat match in one corner. We've got Liam Royal, recently back in the ring, if you will, but we can switch him out if needs be. In the other corner, we'll have Callum Black. And in the th- opposing corner is going to be Big Rab. And have the three of them just Ooh. knocking lumps out of each other for maybe five minutes, I don't care. Just uh, as long as, as one person still stands. <laughs> so I'm going to go for Black, Big Rab and Liam Royal in a triple threat. Now, who would you keep? Who would you have as face and heel? I would have black heel, rab face, and royal in between. Like kind of one of those like heels that everyone kind of likes. That kind of like the he's acting heel, but people like him. People are enjoying his stick. Yes. Mm. Okay. So with the triple tre, good way of bringing big rab up. Nice way mm-hmm. to introduce him as well. Um, do, 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 yeah, yeah. do. I'm trying to think, like, is there a way to actually really mess with that? I don't think I can. Mm. Talk to Joe. Talk to Joe. Talk to Joe. Hmm. <laughs> 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 mm. oh. Uh, I'll keep it. Yeah, keep it. get in there. So, nice. Yeah. Okay. So, um, my next one, so my third match, is going to be the actual wrestling, wrestling match that that's oh, going to be on the, the actual board. wrestling. <laughs> like yeah, it didn't happen before. Wrestling. No, no, no. Like the actual one where it's oh, these two are actually kind of they're they're here to wrestle. They they yeah. mean business when they're here, and it is going to be. Hey, Michael May versus Sean Maxer. Oh, yes, 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 yes. One of my favorite contenders matches. 
Did that actually happen? Oh, this yeah, it was happened. brilliant. It was yes. brilliant. Oh, Max shit. Just, okay, then no. This, okay, no, Max this match already happened. Max the poor fucker. <laughs> shit, why did I think that match never happened? Pretty much. Shit, okay. Pretty much. Um, okay, I'm going to take out then... Okay, I'm going to take out Michael May. And it's okay. going to be Maxer versus... Oh, actually, it's going to be Maxer versus Justin Daniels. Ooh, nice little gatekeeper match, that. Mm. Justin Daniels is going to get his moment to really fucking prove to us that I deserve to be here, and this mm. is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take down Maxer. Love Mr. It. Fucking Japan Dojo. It's going to really fucking take it to him. Yeah. <laughs> now... Mm. I actually really like that. I like the idea behind it. Um, what if, uh, what if you threw Sammy D as the ref? Oh, this is an overcoming battle that Justin has to deal with mm. because Sammy is going to be Sammy is going to be fucking left, right, and center trying to stop him from getting any type of win on it. But rather than have interference, there is going to be the support for Justin is going to be there. So it doesn't turn into a lumberjack max per se, but he does have the fight factory lads come out. They're showing the support. They're cheering him on the whole time. This is happening. They mm. support him. He is there. Like we need, as long as, as he proves his worth in that ring, then that's the fucking door is open for all them. But max are showing them a line of respect. Yeah. Smacking his hand away for a handshake, but giving a subtle nod at the end as if you're all right. And then leaving while Sammy D fucks the ring. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you, you have him on the card just to fuck the ring, or is he actually like booked to win or something? <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna sexually he's he's gonna he's gonna be aroused by a snake noise, and he'll just do a gyration, and everyone in the audience will groan. It's like, oh, oh, not this again. Leave the ring oh. <laughs> now, Jonathan. Yes, your fourth match. You've My fourth match is going to be a death match. What? Jesus. The death match is going to be an all women's death match. Oh my god, you've got two women's matches on your card. What the fuck, man? I know I'm such you a not know that this is wrestling. Progression. Progression. I'm got I am such a I am such a fucking simp, I know. Anyway, um so my heart my death match fuck you. <laughs> Raven and and no. No, Second it's one? going to be uh, Curtis. Thanks to the swap you suggested in my favorite four way, I've now freed up Valkyrie to take on Session Mop Martina in a death match. Fuck. <laughs> Why did you ruin her career so quickly? Jesus Christ. What the hell, dude? <laughs> <laughs> He's not like getting started, and you're like literally just like, oh, no, I'm going to kill her. Well, who said I'm going to kill gonna these women? <laughs> we see when it's, it's a death match. Like, who says Valkyrie's taking any bumps? Like she's gonna do- evade everything she possibly can. She's gonna run out of fucking luck, man. Yeah, potentially. Rob is gonna That's come whole... out from underneath the ring with a kendo stick. <laughs> <laughs> she, Rob could very well be one of the weapons. It. I have not thought that far. I'm just giving the girls creative freedom on this one. <laughs> like it, it's like an OTT death match seems to be well, like quite literally be a bit more over the top. So I'm not thinking Tom Tax or anything like that. I'm thinking like. More Lego than thumbtacks, you know, kind of way, like an actual more like a, a more appropriate for our audience death match, you know. It's not really a death match, then, is it? Yeah, it's it's. I suppose well, it's a death match in in name, but not necessarily in content. Like I'm not expecting anyone to actually fucking die from it. You know what I mean? That's false advertisement. I, want <laughs> I expect the blood. I want blood. We want blood. I'm not like I'm not fully convinced on it. Okay. But what I will as as the caveat, I will add to it. So therefore, add CT mm-hmm. and the returning, hopefully returning, Angel Cruz, and make a a mixed tag. Oh, I like this. Okay, a mixed tie. I missed tie death match. Yes. All right. Okay, okay I like that. I like All right, that. Fine. Because you're still playing off like existing, like everyone. yeah, exactly, That's existing fine, okay. relationships, basically. 
I can make that work. Uh, that's fair. I, I have think to I have to fucking make it work. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So. Did it, Amy? Your fourth mm. match. Okay. All right, we're back from the intermission. People have been to the bar. They've already had their piss break. I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a tag match. Okay. And it is going to be. It's going to be a rematch of sorts that we had at the very first stadium show that I was drunk for and I can't remember it. So can I play my import card? Sure. Okay. I want my Kings of the North versus CCK rematch, but rather than it be the three on three, it's going to be two and two. So it will be Corvin and Bonesaw versus like us and Chris Brooks. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So, so you get your pass. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't want. I don't just obviously because of the the original match that it was. Obviously, it was three on three for the titles. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm not going to do it this way because obviously, Duncan is is actually is actually retired, and I don't want to bring him back just for that. Yeah. And the other member of CCK is redacted now. So yeah, I want I want my rematch of of the two on two, which actually should have been from the Marble Zone. Mm, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So I'm doing a throwback. That's going to be my first match on that one. So it's my only tag match on the belt. So I'm bringing my imports in. Hmm. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. And I want it to be okay. So this is like this is in a sense because it hasn't actually been done. But for this little universe, I am going to just vacate the titles. Yeah. So could it t- be for no, not vacate the titles, but like do it for a number one contendership for titles. Okay. Sure. So that's I know there is already a number one contenders on it, but it's my own fantasy book, and so fuck you. Yeah. Um, so that's what that's what's up for grabs on this. It is a title. Yeah, number shot. one contender. Yeah, number that's one fine. contender. Mm. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> so you get your pass. So Jonathan, mm. match five. Oh, so what are we at now? Okay. We're at, we have two. We have two <laughs> piece, yeah, or a three piece. Three, two, to Amy. No. All right. Okay. Uh, so far, only two two of mine have been changed. Three of yours have been changed. Yeah. No, just two of mine have been changed. Well, then only one of mine has been changed. Then are we are we right there, Foxy? Uh, no, I think it's two piece. Okay. Yeah, it's two piece. I think my two last piece. two matches two haven't changed. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, and you are just announced my your fourth one. match. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What was the change? What the first match that I had was one of the teams had to break up. Yeah. The yes. second one. What was my second change? That was a women's match. Yeah. That was a that was a free go. There was no yeah, that was a free one. Mm. My third match. Third match, that was the Miami Justin Club. Daniels and yeah. Sean Maxler. That was the He added Sammy as a special referee. Added Sammy. Oh okay. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh yeah. So yeah. Okay. So okay. nicely poised then. Um so my fifth match then will be the last before intermission. Um, because yeah, I'm, I, it's a this is a are very just, OTT. This, yeah, how many it's a, matches are you doing? I've got seven. Oh shit! Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, so it's a very OTT card, um, and because of that, we have to have a six man tag match on it. Um, so my six man tag is going maximum comedy, um, as much comedy as you can fit into it. So on one corner, I'm gonna have Captain Sexy, Aiden, Fabulous Nikki, Club Tropicana. And the other side is going to be Sammy D, Justy, and he'll be cool as the gymnasties. Mm. I'm going to have it in this... put Justy against, against uh, Seth. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> well, in fairness, Foxy fucked up my plans because the initial uh, card subject to change here, incidentally, it was meant to be the Tropicana versus the Cruisers, but you, you royally fucked that up. So uh, thanks for that. Um, Still, I'm okay. With, I'm okay with this switch. Happy enough with this. No, I'm happy enough with that. So nice. You get your pass. Have some of that. Okay. So my fifth match. I'm fucking. I'm trying to think Irish wrestlers. That's the hard part. It's when I like get them like, who's still alive? <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> are they on Who's not in trouble? There, I think they're unredacted. Yes, I think they are. Clear. 
keep in mind, you have to make use of people that aren't uh, on OTT. You can make use of other Irish talent. That's what I'm trying to do with my next match. Because everything mm. has always been, everything so far has mainly been OTT. Well, right? yeah. here's the thing is, my, one, my next match, I want to do a Battle Royal. Ooh. Is, is that going to be also... your excuse to use all the, all the people? <laughs> is this also a raffle involved? <laughs> <laughs> there is going to be a raffle yes i want to do a battle royal. okay so because we have a number one contender for our championship now that it's been um since it's been vacated technically vacated. paddy does have a number one contender shot so mm -hmm. paddy is in my main event because yes. my main event is going to be for the title my battle royal is going to be used as his opponent. Who his opponent is going to be? So I need someone who's going to be able to do two matches, which is why I'm doing it as a battle royal, because all mm. you have to do is get your opponent out of the ring. So in doing this, I want to do. Oh, see, I'm just trying to think how many people I can get into a ring in the ringside club. <laughs> so that's where I'm assuming I'm, I'm doing yeah, this yeah. match, this card. Um, so I'm going to have L. J. Cleary. I'm going to have. Um, uh, boat members of Rock Shandy, Big Rab, mm -hmm. Skyler, Matt Skyler. Yeah, I'm going to use Cork boys. boys. Um, actually, I'm going to throw all three members of Morden Hype into this because I don't need them for a tag match anymore because I changed it. Right, so I just want to keep count of this. I'm going to use 15 lads for this. It's a 15 man mm. battle royal, right? Mm. So I've got three members of Morden Hype. I've got um, the two Rock Shandy boys. Two Rock Shandy boys. So there's my five already. So I need mm -hmm. another ten. Um, I have Matt Skyler. That's eleven. Um, I've already used. Be cool. Just you know, seven. Mm -hmm. right. be cool a bone. Um, this is this is where I'm like I've forgotten every single fucking wrestler in the world. <laughs> I'm going to throw Big Rab in there. I'm going to let Big Rab take a chance. That's, That's eight, yeah. Okay, Grant. So you just have to keep count of this then for me. Yeah, yes. we're on it. I'm going to throw a returning Rocky Mac into it. Ooh. Just nine, for the, eh? yeah, just for yeah. the fuck of this. We're allowed to use Charlie Cernan. Yes. All right, mm -hmm. there's my two surprise entrances. Okay, there's the Charlie's that, turning. That brings you to 10. That's 10. Okay, I have five more. Okay, five more to use. Um, God. Can't use him. He's gone. I've already used him. Oh, my God. So many fucking wrestlers. I can't remember any of them. I can't think of any of them. Butch Armstrong. Oh, dear. Okay, yeah. Right, because he's, he's still wrestling. Butch Armstrong is still wrestling. Yes. Um, that's, that's 11. Right. Okay, four so more. I need four more. Oh my God, this is actually really hard now. Keep in mind, now you've used a couple of, like, like you've used a couple from Cork. What about up north? I'm trying to think. I'm actually, I'm actually pulling the blank on Nordy, lads. Oh! Carvel? I want Cal Callum Black. Yeah, Callum Black. So that's, you need three more. Calm okay, back. I need That's three more. Tough. Three more. I'm actually. I'm. This is. It's, it's. I'm not doing this on purpose by not picking Nordy lads. I actually just, honest to God, can't think of any Nordy lads. Yeah. That are safe to use. If you get me, in a mm -hmm. sense, I'm actually pulling the blank on those ones. Then, um, I want to get Brad in for his return match. This will be yes. his return. Very good. Gunter um, Isaac, just be last, clear. Yeah, Gunter Isaac. Sorry, my last. So that's two. two more then. Two more. Two more. Who else have I got? Have I already used Liam Royal? I have. Yes. No, I haven't. Wait. No. No, sorry. That was John. Sorry. Does he yeah. count? Am I still able to use him? You can use, well, I, if I use him, you can use him. I think that's fair. Yeah. That's a fair. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Consider, okay, we haven't had any shows back yet. Okay. Yeah. So, Liam Royal. And then my final pick is going to be someone who was a special guest referee. But he didn't actually have a match in that one. I'm going to throw Sammy D into the mix. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Oh my God, I managed. I actually managed to get 15 people. Holy that shit! Is, I'm actually yeah. I'm more myself on that one. <laughs> Even if one of them is. I remember 15 use. people. <laughs> I remember. I was able to think of two lads from Cork. How dare you? 
<laughs> the, the funny thing about that is potentially like Sammy D could do triple duty. Yeah, he could true, win actually. my main event. But I don't want him to win my battle royal though. Okay. Hmm. I already, okay. I, I actually, my legit, genuine person who I would love to see win that battle royal is actually Callum Black. Yeah, that'd be a great one for Callum. Nice guy. I think, I honestly, God, think that he, like, I don't, I'm not saying that he deserves to win in a sense, but I would love to see him get okay, that yeah. opportunity. Mm. Okay. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. I like that you're oh making news to people. What? <laughs> What'd you do? I forgot someone, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't you matter. Can, you can book him with someone else. You can book him with someone yes. else. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I can you? actually. I'm taking out Sammy D. Sammy D oh. is not. I'm not letting Sammy D do double duty. Oh, okay. Because I actually legit forgot someone, and it was only because I can actually imagine Declan being like, fuck you. Ah, Tell Terry yeah. Thatcher into that 15 man ah. battle royal. I cannot believe I forgot Terry <laughs> Well, you could have held off on him for an mm. actual match. True, yeah. No, but then I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying Terry you, Thatcher in. Are you doing the? the I'm doing a botch. But I'm doing an under. I'm gonna do a rock. Um, you doing the fucking do, Keen booking, uh, where like he has uh, Terry Thatcher like in every single match. Every match no, yeah. no, not even that. Not even that. I'm having Callum <laughs> and Terry be the last two, and Bofi. Both sets of feet. Oh, you're, the, uh, you're doing the, the fucking Brett triple yeah, My threat. main event, my oh, yeah. vein, yeah, my vein event is going to be a triple trap match. Mm, okay. That was match five. five? Yeah. So, what, are you doing six matches on the card? I only had six matches booked for it, so I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw together an impromptu match that In between? Happens. Yeah. Between it's going to be, okay. yeah. So, that's number five. Yeah, you get your pass for that. That's I don't actually have any changes for that. <laughs> uh, You're probably like, because she's not going to be able to remember any other name in wrestling. <laughs> I pretty much use every every roster I have. <laughs> should be fun. Uh, Jonathan, your okay. sixth match. So this is going to be the, the match after intermission. Um, now, Grant, I, I do have space for eight matches here, but I'll, I'll go no, with this. No, no, no. We're yeah. doing fucking six matches, you fucking prick. Seven matches. Mm. Don't get seven. He, he, has, he, he has seven matches planned. Uh, yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. I, I, no, I'm, I just realized I do have space for I'm trying to get an impromptu match. <laughs> okay, interesting. Uh, right, so my sixth match is going to be my where I play my import card. And it's going to play on, again, a regular enough uh, match that's, hap- that's happening in OTT where you'll pitch, like, a Irish talent against someone who's recognized. And you, you, when you see this match on paper, you go, yes, I want yeah. to see this match. So on one side, you're going to see Nathan Martin, not mm-hmm. teaming with Martin Hype. He's going a bit going on his own tonight, for tonight. And on the other side, you're going to have Minoru Suzuki. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Shit, I can't even actually argue with that. Bollocks. Like the idea of it is mental. But <laughs> you want to see that match. Yes. And you know at some point in the next five years that match will happen one way or the other. Providing, Given the, providing is still if, it's, if it's possible, it will happen, in my opinion. If the logistics of a workout, if everything does work out, that is a match that will happen. They're destined to fight each other, in my opinion. I like it. I do. I like it. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I, I actually want to see that. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Love it. So, Amy, match six. Your impromptu I, my, match. My- Next is my impromptu match, which is going to be based on a promo that happens over someone complaining that they have not been on the card. So this is going to be my Sammy D match. Okay, so ah, Sammy D is going to come out pissing and moaning over the fact that I only got to referee. Oh, I don't know why I'm making him Justy. <laughs> I only got to referee. Is, 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 is it Justy dressed as Sammy D? 
<laughs> <He's in person. laughs> no, it is going to be Sammy is going to come out and complain that um, he doesn't like he wasn't given a match on the cards. That he is mm-hmm. like, I'm one of the staples in Irish wrestling. I deserve a match. I need to be back. There. Blah blah blah. I didn't get my title shot. And then uh, King Joe is going to come out and he's going to be like, well, we can push up against the match, but no one really wants to take it on. But one person, only one person wanted to even bother with you. And music's going to hit and it's going to be Chantel Mantel. (laughs) He's going to come out for a match. And it's going to be real like flirty shit all at first and then all of a sudden shit gets really really serious and then the face mask gets pulled off and it turns out to be be cool and just starts wailing on sammy d absolutely wailing on sammy d and sammy just runs off gets a 10 count be cool slash chantel mantel is the next minute by foxy <laughs> Well, to be fair, we never did find out who, like, but Chantal Mantel is their own woman, like, I don't see what the issue here is. I'm nearly sure that her and Be Cool are related. I think they're either cousins. Ah, or I think they're stop. Distant. No, stop yeah. that. No. So he's going to, he's going to, yeah, he's going Fucking to, um, me, edit he's that. He's going to steal some, some outfits. Yeah. Okay, he, so he's, he's masquerading as Chantal like, Mantel. Yes, as Chantel All right, Mantel. Mantel. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Nearly That's sure there is a relation there somewhere, though. Um, yeah. <laughs> because I was only going to do a six-match card. Fuck you okay. very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sorry, and sorry. Seven. Again, I have space for another one. Like, that's the thing. I've, I've worked it out quite well. Oh, yeah. I can see us all missing our buses now for this one. None of us. I want to, I want to get to my main event, which is now going to be a three-way. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's not gay. Yeah, I'm not going to change that in that. Uh, I like the idea behind it. I like the idea. This is behind interesting. It. It's all it's all going to our main event now. Yes. Yeah. And I know well, what look, Amy's main already, event is. Yeah, we already it, know this, what mine event is. This yeah. depends so, on you, John. Right. So what I'm going to do then is, do you want to do my main event first? Considering we already know what it is. Sure. Yeah. Just know what Jonathan is because. Yeah. Okay. So my main. So obviously my main event is going to be. Um, it's going to be for the title. So we are. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, this is going to be for the title, actually, then, in a sense, in this one, because we already had a number one contender for it, so now, since it's vacant, winner is going to take all. So it's going to be Paddy M mm-hmm. versus Terry Thatcher versus Callum Black. Um, this one here, uh, Paddy's going to be his usual kind of character in this one. He's, like, he's yeah. going to have a bit of fun. Like, yeah. he, he is having a bit of fun at the whole thing. Um, Callum is going to be the re- Car- Callum is going serious into this. He knows he has something to prove. Mm-hmm. He, he wants to prove that I'm not a fucking contender anymore. I am a main event. So he is going to be the real, he's going to be the heavy basically in this match. Whereas Terry Thatcher is going in with the fire that he had against Haskins because he still sees Haskins as his end game on this until he beats Haskins sort of thing. Like, yeah, this isn't really like he's, he still has shit to prove. Whereas if he has the title, the Haskins also had it is a way of them continuing their feud later down the road. If Haskins is able to come back and take on with that one. So for my main event, I'm going to have it as Paddy's going to go out on his knee. I'm sorry, Paddy, if you, if you ever see this or Foxy tells you what I've done. <laughs> He's going to be taken out on the knee. Um, Callum's still going to be the one to fucking bulldog that shit. He's going to take him out by the knee. It's going to come down to Callum and Terry in a fucking chop for all type situation. But I'm going to give the title to Terry on this one. Mm-hmm. Callum, he's going to get out of the tree. Can't, he's gonna, it's literally going to be a tree and title up at the same time but Terry is going to be the one that get it so that kind of gives Callum his chance well I fuck like Callum's going to complain about this I got up my my shoulder was up on the tree count I was up on the tree count we're still going to give to Terry so the two of them can continue their feud and then bring in Mark Haskins as my my other as my other import for my next show Hmm. to take on Terry Declan can just sploosh all over the place (laughs) Uh, I like it I actually do really like that I like the idea behind what where you're going with as well. Yeah, there's a story being told um, over the show. Yeah. Like unintentionally, like I think 
because it's just like you're just like throwing the matches and then all of a sudden like oh wait no this is what I'm gonna do boom 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 so in the last be, half of see, the this fucking the thing show is this, I, you actually make a big story I've literally line. I've actually pulled I've made a big storyline and considering I am booking this literally right now I haven't yeah. put one off like I I think it's evident to say that I haven't put any real thought into this no. until my, my third last match on the card. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, just, I just want to do a battle royal. Oh, I, I actually have a legitimate reason now to do a battle royal. So there, there's my show. There's, there's my seven. But that's the thing. Like, with, the, with the idea behind that, you basically turned a show that was going to be good to something that like everyone wants to see. I have a reason. Like there, you've steadily built it. Like, re- like oh, again, unintentionally, but you move built it Joe. so well. <laughs> move over, Joe. We're winning and a booking now, committee. <laughs> now it's not over yet. John still has his main event. Mm. That's true. So. That's true. Okay, John. So this match, this main event, is going to be for the recently vacated tag team titles. So this is my first. My fourth protocol is going to get the titles off British Strong Style, right? The world title can wait for another show. Um, so it's going to be a four corners uh, tag team match. It's going to be four tag teams in it. First fall to the finish. Okay. So in one corner, and again, I'm kind of going for a bit of a theme here, where like it's literally just like the four, like literally the four corners of OTT history here. Okay. So in one corner we're going to have the returning lads from the flats. So in, mentally, I was thinking Worky and Martin, but Worky and Paddy M works just as well, so we'll go with that. Uh, on the other co- side are going to be the old regulars, the favourites, consistently always solid matches, uh, the Kings of the North, Corvin and Bur- Bonesaw. On the other side then is going to be the, I suppose one of the major successes, if you like, uh, of the contender's side, which would be LJ Cleary and Darren Carney representing Morden Hype. And then lastly, then, as it were, the gatekeepers, the classics, if you will, from the first Tivoli main events and onwards, it's going to be the Wards, Luther Ward and Rocky Mack, uh, returning to take on the challenge for the tag team titles. And my, essentially my notion here is that uh, Joe's going to play Kingmaker here. He's going to like basically put over the more than hype lads. He's going to get pinned in order to, uh, for more than hype to win the tag team titles. Because my pre- my initial idea is essentially it's proven that like the the modern hype lads are just a little bit like step above the the current uh, the tag teams that have been there before. So the lads from the flats they're there they're in with a shout, but like they're not necessarily in contention. Kings of North always a threat will always be the dark horse in that match. But the wards is kind of that like seal of approval, the cherry on top to prove that that match the these lads are leg- legitimately championship material. So like. We're pretty strong, so I'll, like eventually, like when that match ever happens, if it ever happens, like pretty strong, so did the job on Morden Hype, and it'll look brilliant, and everyone will think they're fantastic. This is the same thing, but without the British Strong Style premise. You don't need them, you need, need to rely on them in that sense. Like they're free of their responsibility. This is Joe doing it essentially himself with his own name and his own moniker, and then having the other two teams as a sort of like proof of concept that, yeah, Morden Hype have just beaten these three teams the three most prominent teams in OTT tag team history, all in the one match, first fall to a finish. And they're the tag team champions. And again, I didn't say who won against Nathan Martin and Minoru Suzuki. So Morton Hype could, have, could come out of that show winning everything. And essentially, bam, this is our show now. <laughs> good, good luck with that. Like- yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Suzuki ain't jobbing. <laughs> no, no. But they, but this is the thing. Well, okay, maybe Sorry. again, he didn't. He's not, probably not going to job. But Jesus Christ, like Martin's going to look ser- like a proper star in that match. Ah, yeah, yeah. Where no, no but so. I like the idea behind it. You have the 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 pillars of tag team history for OTT. In, in order match, to you are pro- upgrade, you are Morton portraying. Hype. Yeah, you are portraying Morton Hype as the the younger underdog tag team yeah like the future as we're exactly because like you, 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 everyone knows more than hyper good like but still yes. in like in 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 a in a ring full of experienced heads they are gonna look like ooh, they're like you're gonna say like well surely these got teams have the savvy they, these guys have been around so much they should be able to win yeah. they have an experience but no more than hype's gonna sweep them completely 
and show that mm-hmm. like yeah they are good enough to hang with the big boys they are the big boys now they're tight team champions and good luck fucking taking it off them the, the idea behind that is actually very good uh, for to wait to if you present it that way and especially with enough time mm. like that match you you could easily see that on an OTT show like yeah. for the likes of a stadium show and no I don't think anyone would really bat an eyelid about it like or have any qualms about it mm. so I really like that and it makes it a tough decision because like both the main events that both of you have pitched are, are good and they have good concepts behind them. So like, uh, even trying to think like, how could I actually change them? Whose card wins? Okay, that's all we yeah, know. That's <laughs> Which card was <laughs> pound, pound, We don't pound care better. who wins. Mm. Mine had Chantel man. <laughs> I, I mean, had a even female even death man. match. That's fucking progressive. Like, that's a quality. That was changed you know, to an intergender death match. Still, to be fair. still, yeah, it, it was changed. changed. You're, you're right. It, it was, but th- okay, that's even more quality. Fifty-fifty all across the board. Anyone can do death matches. Old cards were very that's interesting, it. and now the way I'm doing this is in terms of from a fan. Uh, this I'm going to have to go with Amy being the winner because her story built like as I said it went from, from being show like, perspective. Uh, a show that, like from a show perspective went from being like a show that okay it has the makings of being good to fucking like in the later part of it just still got everyone invested and we want to see the main event mm. and it's built well Hmm. So, Amy wins this edition. <laughs> <laughs> so. She fucked up her, ty- her prize. <laughs> oh, that, that was the winner. If, if someone do like the reverse on it, I can't do it. I think a spider fucking fell out of this. I thought it did. <laughs> oh, there it is. No, it wasn't a spider. I got it. <laughs> yeah, there's my winner there. <laughs> like, CCK was the winner for her. This no, was actually uh, made by Foxy Bros. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it now. The further. Foxy, Foxy Bros. Bros. Which you could, well, well, Foxy Bros. Oh, yeah. Mine yeah, is let me, reverse. Let me point at the sign. Yeah, yours is. Yeah, this is actually annoying me that mine isn't like, I can't reverse go. mine, but yeah. Just, Foxy Bros. Foxy Bros oh, there we go. All it's here is turn it upside down. Uh, <laughs> incidentally, if you want to know the the three wrestlers I had left over for a bonus match was Terry Thatcher, Paul Tracy, and Maxer in a triple threat, which would have been a nice yeah, well, match. Yeah, yeah, but didn't have it, it. It it wouldn't have fit. So you know, I already had a triple threat. So <laughs> fuck it. So I like that game. Yeah, that was fun. Let's do that again. Um, with more caveats. I actually yeah. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, let's do yeah. that again. Um, to be fair, I'm actually very proud of my. Yeah, I'm actually very proud that I was able to actually pull a, a match card out of my arse. Like, yeah, so no, to be fair, fair play. I'm actually more proud of myself. I, I like I like how this like went from being like just a, a rough little idea to actually you enjoy both of you enjoying it. Mm. Like the, the, idea the mental gymnastics oh, required. Yeah, that's yeah. Yes. that was that was like me attempting our first RPG. But, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but like, also like, like the fact that doing? like. <laughs> It's fun for me because I get to hear these concepts and actually, like, being someone that's involved, it's like, Jesus, that actually the structure works out well mm. for in, in terms of like how, like, some matches might not work, but others like do tend to make up for that. It, it's the same, same yeah. with any other show. Yeah, but. I like this and I was like, could... oh my god, the screen's gone off again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Ignore it. Ignore but Ignore we could that. actually make this a make this a thing where it's like, all right, we'll do say I like want this six, as I... six six versions of this and we see who the winner is after. That'd be good, or yeah. Five yes, of them. I, I like yes. So like the best like of five idea. kind of thing. I also mm. love the fact Yeah, I actually also love the fact that I was able to get CCK actually on a show. 
<laughs> and like us didn't end up injured afterwards like you did the last well, we, time. He, well, yeah. we don't know that. That wasn't, we, we didn't establish that at the time. No, it, no he, he didn't get injured. He didn't get injured. He did not get injured. <laughs> he never got injured. But they never I, won either, like to be fair. So no. just because I know they're never going to get booked again on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so. <What? laughs> One so, one is now that's, retired and one is now in Japan. So I mean, my my dreams of of a CCK. Even Ango knows the fucking pain of me protesting this match. <laughs> Ango made a joke before at a show in Tala. I was chatting to him, and he legit turned around and said to me, and I was like, "Oh man, if I mean, if I was booking a show myself," and straight away he went, "You can't have Chris Brooks in every match, Amy. Get over it." And he just walked. Away, I was like, okay, even Ango knows. I guess that's a bad sign, isn't it? Like, I just want one yeah. match. I just want one match. Also, when, so. when we were signing, when they were signing the uh, the petition, when B Cool sent out his petition to for, to get the fans to sign, literally what I signed on it was, for love of God, please, Brooke, Chris, please book Chris Brooks, Chris Brooks. for one last time, right? Four other people who I don't even know who they are. They also wrote on it. Give Amy Chris Brooks. And someone else is like, <laughs> she's waited long enough. March is like, just because he had to cancel in March because of the snow doesn't mean he can't come back. Like, honest to God, yeah. like, there was random people who were like, huh. I agree with that. I'm, I don't I'm know who she is, but I agree with her sentiments. <laughs> well, on that yeah. note, like, we transition to Jonathan's segment. Yes. Uh, yeah, I've come up Jonathan. with a very. Jonathan, who's fucking set up a fucking game show. Yes, very much so. He's very good at this. Yes, I, I do have past form in this. So, no, 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 Amy, Amy, no need for that. No I just that. wanted to do it. Fuck you. No, that's fine. I've got oh music for this. Oh my God, he actually has it. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I have music for this. Um, <laughs> I have to try and get comfortable again because I've got a sore tummy. How's that coming across, lads? <laughs> This will get me in the mood, by the way, just so you know. Like, uh... Oh my god, is this beyond? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm disappointed that you're not wearing a red shirt. <laughs> That's true, yeah, fairness. Also, I did kind of like get rid of, I did malt like today, so I've actually got rid of the fucking side. I could have gone practice a side parting and got the beard, but no, I, I decided to. Shave those sideburns. Yeah, pretty much. So. <laughs> Uh, to celebrate the launch of our new show yesterday, at time over as well today, but yesterday when this comes out, uh, that's a lie. I decided to do a special Beyond Belief Fact or Fiction round. This one on football, because I know you two oh. know fuck all about football. So, I'm uh, really shit at this. Yes. So, bear with me as I get in character. <clears throat> okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing the X Files. Squeeze, squeeze this, rub this, listen to this. There we go. Right, got it. Here we go. <clears throat> <laughs> oh my goodness. Football, or soccer as it's called in some parts of the world, is a sport played by millions of people around the world, from Europe to Africa to the United States. It entertains and thrills with its action and drama at the highest level, showcasing the talents and abilities of the world's greatest. But for some, it's merely a pastime to keep a physical shape. This sport has been witnessed to some remarkable sporting stories, some that are beyond belief. But tonight, it is up to you to discover the stories based off real events and those that are total fabrications. Can you distinguish the onside from the offside? We start tonight with a story from Italy, a country who adores their football, a nation never short of passion they follow their chosen team to the end of the earth, committing themselves to a life of adulation and heartbreak as the club tries to live up to their high expectations. Clubs very much live <laughs> off the energy and money of its fan base. But what happens when one fan appears to change a club's fortune completely? Just ignore that, sudden stop. <laughs> so this story is, uh, is called uh, Lady Luck. <clears throat> Based oh on God. Italy, our former Goliaths of football, Vercelli Calcio, who after decades of hardship and turmoil now play in Italy's third division, a semi-professional league. <laughs> Once a team that dominated the country after the war and beyond into the 50s, they were unable to keep up with the money and momentum of their rivals. 
and soon they tumbled from the top of the league down to the very bottom and now find themselves a shell of their former selves. Nicola Setsu, who purchased the club recently from its longtime family owners, with every intention of restoring Rossetti to its, for, to its glory years, years. Every day he'd stare at the teams gone by holding trophies of decades past, dreaming that one day the glory days would return. On the pitch, however, was another story, an empty stadium punctuated by a team low in ability and confidence. He seemed to be burdened by the pressure of playing for such a famous team. Setsu himself would watch from the stands as a team plays in relative silence to a negligible mon- number of home supporters. His hopes of making Vercelli a force in Italian football again was crumbling. But that was until someone sat down beside him. An old woman who appeared to be in her mid-70s, clutching a walking stick and wearing an old scarf with the co- club colours of black, white and red, started watching intently at the game happening on the pitch. Setsu was relatively new as the owner of the club, but was certain he's never seen this woman before. She smiled at him and explained she remembers his team when they were kings of Italy and mentioned names of past legends who she all met before. These names Setsu knew from looking at those old photographs of team pictures and trophy celebrations. The two sparked off a conversation, the old woman sharing stories of Glory's past, while Setsu would explain how he wants those glories to return to this team. All the while, Vercelli had recovered from a 2-0 deficit at halftime and ended up winning the game 3-2. Setsu and the old woman were jubilant, as were the hundreds watching the game. Setsu was, in fact, so focused on the conversation and the thrilling finale of the game that he forgot to ask the old woman's name. However, she would return two weeks later when Vercelli next played at home, sat in the same seat as before, and watched in silence as Vercelli won again against four fierce local rivals. It was the first time in a long time that the club won three games in a row. But the momentum didn't stop there. Over the course of the season, Vercelli would go on a winning streak at their home ground. By all accounts, they were unstoppable. In fact, they got promoted with relative ease and celebrated this on the pitch with their fans, the numbers improving with every home game. The next season would continue this incredible run of good fortune as Setsu was able to negotiate transfers for exciting young talent from larger clubs to complement the workmanlike graft of his old squad. All the while, the old woman now known as Marta watched on from her seat with pride. Vercelli were now in the second division and impressed everyone with the skill and prowess, earning themselves another promotion, this time to the promised land of the first division of Italian football. Vercelli's resurgence was complete. The once old and empty stadium alive again with the sound of fans beckoning their players forward, filling every seat. Marta now surrounded by fans who she also regaled with stories every home game. Vercelli's first season back at the top was moderately successful, ensuring they would play again there next season. However, it was at the National Cup competition they were really impressing in. They'd find themselves in the final against the mighty Turin FC team. And as a token of appreciation, Setsu brought Marta with the team to the big game in Rome and let her sit with the executives of the club. Marta was three years older now and her mobility was declining. However, she still supported her club regardless. The big match resulted in a dramatic penalty shootout between Turin and Vercelli, with Vercelli as drastic underdogs to Turin. This would not deter them, however, as Vercelli would win the shootout and win their first trophy in nearly 50 years. The celebrations ran through the night in the town as a team bus arrived back home with trophy in hand. Vercelli Calcio were once again a force in Italian football. The next season was one of hope for Setsu and his club as he dreamed of building a team that would challenge for league titles and the prospect of European football looming. However, he received some terrible news. Marta Caccione died peacefully in her sleep, age 81, three days after Vercelli lifted the National Cup. Her death devastated Setsu, who despite the age gap considered her to be a good friend. The first league game saw the team pay tribute to her with a minute's silence. Vercelli would go on to lose this game, a familiar sight for that season. Vercelli could not replicate the remarkable feat of last season and would end up relegated from the top division. Setsu would have no choice but to sell their star players to rivals and start again in the second division. But the story was the same. Vercelli toiled and struggled but would be relegated again, back to where they started. And there Setsu sat after a roller coaster five years, back in an empty seat in the third division. It dawned on him that their decline coincided with Marta's death but also their run of good fortune coincided with Martha's arrival at the club. Was it all because of her? He climbed up to the seat where Martha used to be, only to find her scarf and walking stick, the only things left behind from her. 
Was this story about a superfan changing the fortunes of a team overnight real? Was this old woman blessed in some way that allowed her team to flourish despite all the hardship? Or did the millions of capital the new owner transferred to the club finally start to pay dividends? And it was poor management later on that led to their steep decline. Do you believe this story? Or are we just trying to push our luck? So, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> First of all, so, well done. I'm, I'm going to hold, very, hold your counsel for the time well being. Done. Okay. That's your first story, Lady Luck. <clears throat> Next on. How many, how, many, sorry, how many stories are there? We have five stories. Okay, because I'm just conscious that it's of the time because it's already half 11. I know. Yeah. The World Cup is considered to be the biggest competition in the world, where nations from every continent showcase their talent to a global audience. To some countries, their qualification was a formality. And the focus was to win the competition and confirm themselves as the best footballing country in the world. But for some, it was a chance to show the world their culture and character, perhaps to smash preconceptions of the country. This was the story of Colombia in 1994, where the story of hope would turn to tragedy. This one's called uh, National Hero. <clears throat> You proud prick! Like you're like oh, I did this. <laughs> He's well chuffed with himself. Yes. You're, funny, you're like the fucking cat that got the cream right now. You're like Tina. You're like Tina when she like motorboats me. You're that fucking happy. I, I now know. I now relate to her on an emotional level, and um, not for the motorboat <laughs> thing, for something different. Um. So, the United States of America hosted the World Cup in 1994 and put on a remarkable show. Millions would descend on the host cities to watch some of the best teams in the world do battle. African nations playing Europe's finest. The toast of Asia competing against the forces of South America. It was truly a global competition. It was a tournament of great colour and vibrancy, with cultures all around the world sharing their passion for their countries. For Colombia, it was an opportunity to show the world what they were made of. The Colombian national team was blessed with raw talent, a remarkable coincidence of some of the world's most exciting players, all coming from the same country. All across the pitch were players that were wowing audiences worldwide, whether they played abroad or in the home country of Colombia. Spearheading this golden age of Colombian football was their team captain and central defender, Pablo Diaz. Diaz understood what it meant to be the captain of his team, representing the country he loved so dear. While the team played scintillating and exciting football, back home, Colombia was in disarray. The drug trade was out of control in the country, with a political system powerless to stop it. The streets were violent and dangerous, with murders happening everywhere you look. A power vacuum occurring in the criminal underworld accelerated this chaos, and the streets of cities like Bogota, Medellin, and Barranquilla were practically war zones, with cartels taking the streets by force and brutally killing those who opposed them. Diaz recognized the gravity of what he, they set, set out to do here. This is the first time Colombia has qualified for the World Cup and realized that a strong performance could rewrite some of the headlines the world had known Colombia for. Diaz would regularly write in the Colombian national papers, pleading for the violence to stop and asking for the nation's support in the World Cup, explaining how it can be a force for good. Diaz was seen in high regard in his home country where he played his football, and so his words seemed to have an effect. It was now up to the team to do their part. Despite the team being blessed with such talent, Colombia struggled to make an impression on the world stage, drawing their first game against a pragmatic Austrian side, while an upset loss against Sweden put Colombia in a likely position of being eliminated from the World Cup at the first time of asking. But again, Diaz would issue a battle cry to his team and his nation, believing wholeheartedly that if they could qualify with a win over the hosts, the United States of America. When it came to the match day, and the match between the USA and Colombia was still poised at one all going into the final few minutes, a nation watched in horror as a cross from an American winger was tracked into Colombia's net. But it wasn't an American who scored. It was the team captain himself, Pablo Diaz, who accidentally put the ball in his own net, effectively eliminating his country from the World Cup. The national team would return to Colombia in disgrace, perceived to have blown a massive chance to rid Colombia of their bad reputation, and further perceived to be behind more civil unrest in the major cities. The majority of the team played in Europe and elsewhere, and so quickly flew back to their clubs to prepare for the next season. Pablo Diaz, however, stayed in Bogota, where he played his football, and continued to try and act as a voice of reason in the national press. However, his calm and pragmatic words had no effect, and he was criticized by the paper itself on many occasions, calling him a hypocrite and a liar. Several days later, Diaz would visit friends in a Bogota nightclub, 
watching on as the final of the World Cup played on. He would explain to his friends that he was leaving the country, explaining he had agreed to move to Italy to play for the iconic Milan team. His friends were shocked and some outraged that Diaz would leave. He explained he had no choice but to move on with his life and career and that his family were in the process of moving to Italy. As Diaz and his friends were leaving the club, several men confronted them, wanting to have words with Diaz over his performance at the World Cup and a supposed move to Italy, which was leaked to the, previous, to the papers the previous day. A fight was brewing between the two groups until Diaz made an escape in his car and seemingly drove off. Diaz was to leave for Milan the next day, but never appeared at the airport. His wife begged the police to investigate, but they reluctantly agreed, with even the corrupt police sore from his World Cup adventure. They would soon locate his car abandoned a few hundred metres from the nightclub, with Diaz nowhere to be found. All his personal belongings still in the car, untouched. Diaz was declared missing and presumed dead, with news of this wor reaching worldwide, and a national outpouring of sorrow at his funeral proved to wash away the anguish and pain of his unfortunate own goal of the World Cup. Diaz's death was still seen as another dark chapter in the history of, of Colombia and served as a cautionary tale for generations to come that tragedies like this should never happen again. Was this story about a national hero turned zero disappearing an actual event? Could Diaz have possibly faked his death in order to avoid and escape the torment and pressure he was facing in his country? Or was it the case, as fellow players would later testify, that outside forces in the criminal underworld had threatened the team to perform, and Diaz was just one of many casualties of their brutal reign of terror? Do you believe this story? Or are we just betraying your trust? Fuck off, you smoke prick. <laughs> <clears throat> Moving on to story three now, I'll just ignore that remark. <laughs> Out of curiosity, can, can we only do three of them? It's just because I'm getting really tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting you to sleep, am I? <laughs> it's not that no. you're putting me to sleep, it's just I have a tummy ache all day today and I'm just really tired now. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, we can do three, it's fine. Okay. I believe these two for later. <clears throat> yeah, I was just going to say, because I can imagine we'll be doing this one again. Yeah, I think so, yeah. 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 Cool. <clears throat> have you ever had a time in your life when you've had nothing but bad luck? No matter what yes. you do, you seem to always, <laughs> always have misfortune follow you. Maybe yes. you walked under a ladder or smashed a mirror and that ends up coming back to haunt you. It did. That is, if you believe it. that is if you believe the superstitions, of course. This next story tells of a man who tries to cure the bad luck of his club and will take as many measures as necessary to do it. Okay, this might actually be me. <laughs> this, uh, this story is called Four Corners. St. Andrews oh, is a well-known football team located in the West Midlands of England and has been in operation since 1875. In fact, it stands as one of the oldest football clubs in the country. In that time, they become a prominent club in the community of Coventry, where they are situated. However, they also remain as one of the clubs who have never won a league title in their history, a dubious but remarkable record in English football. While this may amuse football historians and fans alike when hearing of this incredible statistic, longtime fans and club historians seem to believe there is a reason for this. St. Andrews had started playing on waste ground not too far away from where they live now, and over time, they would fence off the area to form a pitch and begin charging admission to see the team play, one of the first clubs in the country to do so. In 1905, the chairman of the fledgling club decided to purchase land nearly a mile away from where they used to play and would use that as their new home ground. The decision made sense at the time, as the club would be placing, playing closer to the city centre, making it easier for people to make it to the home games. It would also cement St Andrews as a team for the Coventry faithful to commit to. The deal was struck and this land would soon become what is now known as Bordersley Park, where St. Andrews still play to this day. However, what people didn't know at the time was that the land the club director had purchased was actually a gypsy camping site. And with the purchase of the land, the gypsies were immediately evicted with significant force. So much so that it was rumored that gypsies laid a curse on the land to ensure nothing but hardship would follow the director and tangentially his club. Dismissing this possible hoodoo, the director would go ahead with the opening of his new ground on Boxing Day 1906. But the grand opening nearly didn't happen. A massive snowstorm developed over Christmas Day and the heavy snow piled up into the new stadium. Hundreds of volunteers helped to clear the snow in order for the grand opening to take place with a league match against Teesside Rovers planned. Over the next 100 years, the curious events of Bordersley Park never ended with just a surprise blizzard. During World War II, it was bombed by the Nazis resulting in massive damage to half of the stadium. Later on that decade, a fire broke out in the east stand of the stadium and the firemen on hand tried to put it out, 
but mistook water for petrol and exacerbated the fire. Countless occasions of floods, lumpy pitches causing matches to be called off, floodlights have failed multiple times during matches, and many staff members have claimed the stadium facilities are haunted, with claims of seeing ghosts and hearing wails in the various huts around the stadium. This came to a head in the 1990s, as St. Andrews completed a stadium extension and renovation, with the old facilities replaced with modern structures to comply with new safety requirements. However, despite this, the football's team form took a downturn and faced relegation to the third division, despite being one of the strongest paper teams on paper in the league. The manager at the time, Frank Barry, couldn't understand the run of bad luck the club was on, with a recent flare-up of injuries, suspensions and disallowed goals. Barry was at the wit's end, and during a meeting with the St. Andrews Supporters Trust, the possibility of Bordersley Park being cursed was brought up. An elderly St. Andrews fan explained to the chairman and Frank about the history of the ground, and several fans agreed with the possibility that the stadium was haunted, with other fans corroborating with stories and of sightings and sounds around the area. Frank Barry considered himself a superstitious man and asked his team about this. Several players said they had similar experiences in the dressing room and tunnels, and one referee raising this before a game that season. This confluence of paranormal activity made Frank believe it was having a serious impact on his team, and so he decided to take action. Looking back at the history of the club, Frank and the chairman noted the claims of the evicted gypsies laying a 100-year curse, curse on the land that would become Bordersley Park, but no evidence to confirm it. The situation in St. Andrew's season was growing grave as relegation to the third division loomed. A win could stop the rot and potentially save Frank his job. And so he remembered some old wives' tales about old curses and how to be rid of them. With that, one wintry night in late February, Frank wandered into Bordersley Park alone, walked up the corner flag he facing the northwest corner of the pitch and urinated on it. He then for- moved on to the opposing flag and urinated there as well. He did the same on the far side of the pitch, making sure to mark his territory on all four corners of the pitch. Fry would go home and hope that ne- the next day, a match day, would bring good fortune. And so it did. St. Andrews would go to win seven of the next ten games, ensuring their safety in the second division. But the secret of their success, Fry's unique exorcism, was never told until years later in an interview. St. Andrews would be relegated the following season, but the fortunes would change with the dawn of the new millennium being promoted to the top division in 2001 and winning their first ever cup in 2011. 105 years since the Gypsy curse was supposedly laid. Oh, this corner smells like piss. (laughs) Is it possible that soiling a location could cleanse it of its past? Or was it just a ludicrous solution to a possible ludicrous situation? But then, how do you explain the remarkable lack of success for a football club that's been in existence since 1875? And only in the 2000s, when the curse is possibly lifted, that they fill their trophy cabinet for the first time. Is this story of gypsies cursing a football club real? Or have we simply solved the truth? <laughs> so You are absolutely loving this. <laughs> you, are fucking, you are in your fucking element right now. So, there's your three stories. You have Lady Luck. You have a super fan who somehow changed the fortunes of a football club. Second story is the disappearance of a national team captain after he scored an own goal at the World Cup. Or your third story, a football manager pissing on uh, corner flags to lift the gypsy curse. Okay. So I'm let's start off with go. Lady Luck. True. False. Okay. Do you think the story of the superfan changing the fortunes of a club overnight is true? Well, you're wrong. It's a total fabrication. One so, nail, one nail, one. <laughs> so, next up then is the story about the national team captain. Is true. it true or is it false? True. 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 Next up is the story of a national hero disappearing after an unsuccessful tournament. Do you believe this tragic story of a man finished managing without his race? If you're correct, a similar event did take place. This was the sad tale of Andres Escobar. Who was assassinated by a cartel outside the strip club during the 1994 World Cup. So, to be fair, as soon as you said Colombia and he was like, went missing, I was like, that has to be true. It was far yeah. too much. Yeah. That uh, has to be. It's actually a remarkable story about that. The, the Colombian football team used to play at, a, at Escobar's uh, like compound, like played football games at it. In fact, like uh, during the World Cup, uh, Escobar, Pablo Escobar visited the Colombian team nonstop to give them pointers and that. 
uh, and during the World Cup, uh, supposedly someone uh, sent the team death threats to win football games. Uh, another one of the football players, their uh, son was kidnapped, the daughter was kidnapped during okay. the competition because they weren't performing. So yeah, yeah, that's that's the yeah, that seems legit. Yeah. And now so, the manager pissing on the four corners. Mm. I'm going to say this is true. False. Our next story was the gypsy curse laid in the football ground, leading to decades of misfortune. Do you think this story about a man urinating in corner flags is true? Yes, it's fact. <laughs> <laughs> this is a... Um, yeah. <gasps> Three out of three. Well done. This is genuinely true. Um, Barry Fry was the name of the manager. Shut the fuck up. Um, and the name of the club is Birmingham City. And the home ground is called St. Andrews. See what I did there? Um, yes, supposedly the, the club, the fans, the supporters trust was convinced that the, the ground has been haunted and cursed for 100 years because they never won a league title at it, never won a cup. Uh, some weird shit always constantly like, happens. just had shit players. That's like, what I was shit. thinking. That's yeah. No, no, yeah, like I said, there was a delusion players. there. Yeah. But yeah. again, the coincidence was that when oh he pissed on the corner flags. He pissed on the four flags. He did. Yeah. He, he didn't admit to it until he left the club a couple of years later and like said, oh. yeah, that's what I did uh, to do to do it. Because it, like, it was like a shorthand. It was like a kind of like a throwaway comment in an interview to say like, oh yeah, look, I, I commit to football teams. I piss on corner flags for them. It's like, sorry, what? Go back to the corner flags thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, we have a few questions. Were you drunk, sir? Or <laughs> is there something else? Well, there was actually a gypsy curse and yeah. I looked it up. I found a book on the occult in uh, the really dark section of the library. Mm. Not the adult section, but the other section. That's class. I really like that. I like that game. Yeah, so, uh, so Amy, you've won three to one there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I will... I feel I, I will... redeemed. <laughs> from and, my last time of playing fact your fiction <laughs> and the last thing I'll say about that is I'm Jonathan Frakes <laughs> 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 and I'll just walk off then so I'll, I'll keep the other two stories for, the, for what will be the next round of it because I think we're going to be doing this again <laughs> yes. yes definitely Excellent. that was actually so much fun I, I think it's better that it's actually three rather than five yeah actually it worked out uh, better but uh, yeah Still though, that was a bit of fun, yes. wasn't it? I thought that was fun. Yeah. So obviously, like with that, like we have approached the end of this uh, miscellaneous podcast. Yes, so, this one went on long. Yes, this one well. went on. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, anything we need to plug I before went... we go? Foxy Bros. <laughs> the sign. Point at the sign, everybody. Uh... Nice. He's got it perfect now. <laughs> So. My finger looks so long. <laughs> my finger points. <laughs> it's my pointing finger. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, please buy merch. Please visit the page. Yeah, interact. Do, Do that all that stuff. shit. Uh, yeah. Like, Facebook, share, and subscribe. And if, you follow, if you follow Niall, uh, Niall Fox on Instagram, you'll also see more of his work that you can that is available to purchase. Mm, Would yes. you prefer actually if I plugged your stuff as opposed to you having to do it? Because if if yes. it makes you uncomfortable, I have no problem shilling the shit out of your stuff. Oh yes, please. You'll be the resident shill. Oh you? hell yeah! I've bought like I have three <laughs> Foxy Bros fucking yeah. products, and they're class. I have Ken and Ryu orig- original Ken and Ryu Street Fighters, and I have my gloriously sexy CCK. So mm. I'm very happy. To, to shill and I highly recommend. So if you do follow, if you go for it's uh, Fox Nile on Instagram, and um, you'll find the fa- link to the Facebook page. The there's Foxy Bros retailer on Facebook. Have a look on it. There is some smashing, smashing pearl beads. It is pearl beads. Yeah, pearl beads. Uh, original designs that are on there. I highly recommend you have and do fucking buy a few. Your class. Your All of it. I, think I need own. money. I need money. <laughs> I'm broke. Man's got kids. Okay? Man's got kids. He needs He's got job. kids. He needs feed. I got kids. Um, <laughs> you can follow us at Nerds Are Us, obviously here on YouTube. Um, yeah. Our Twitter handles are all going to be there. You can follow In, us. Down there. That's, we're not as interesting as we are here. 
yeah, all on the bottom. Yeah. Uh, you can also follow Jonathan on his other page at Monday Madness. Yes. It, well, I, I, he does it, an awful good lot side of channel. He has yes. another crew. He's cheating on us. Yeah, he's cheating on us with another crew. To be I, fair, I, 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 I'm, I'm cheating on them we're with the, you, just to be clear. Bitch. Yeah, you're the side bitch. We're, we're the new we're sexy friends. girlfriend. Yeah. yeah, we're li- yeah we're lit we're we're the uh what what's what's it in in what's the thing like are in Italian mobs the gulas we're the gulas yes that's it that's clearly <laughs> what this is um, like subscribe hit the little notification bell if you like what you see have a look mm-hmm. at that's a lie that's a lie because oh, they're doing excellent spit take in it that's very it's, it's it's really yeah, the only reason the show exists. Yes. Yeah, just purely just to see me humiliate myself. Um, we have Ripper will be out on Monday. We're gonna are we starting Act uh, Three on Monday? Yeah, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. 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 Yeah, uh, we've got our Mirror WWE Universe still uh, kicking off on on Monday. We have a second, our new episode of Comics in the Beyond that'll be out Tuesday. It's so check that out. Yay! Uh, we'll also have. We finally then, got a hand at Tony. Yeah, we we finally found Tony. Turns out he was in Finland all along. Yeah. Who knew? Crazy he was in Finland. Who fucking knew? Who fucking does that? Like, who throws and, a shoe? Uh, anyway. I don't know. <laughs> Fights like a woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll, yeah. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll have the, uh, we'll cool. have the Ripper Act 3 kicks off on Wednesday. Uh, another episode of Foxy Bros uh, goes, goes live. Uh, I believe you guys are talking about the Umbrella Academy this week, so that should be fun. Uh, no, that's, no, that's not, that's that, next week. That, is that, is that's that next a future, week? That's a future episode. That's a future episode. Is it a future episode? Because yes. I fucking I, 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 edit I, that. According to me, I, I, I have it scheduled for the tenth, so I'll have to discuss this with my colleagues. <laughs> so apparently, there's been there a, should no. be one. There should be there's one, one before. One before. Yeah, that's a, that's all. That's live. Is that it? Came, that went that went on the Thursday. Yeah. I didn't even notice. Okay. Really did. <laughs> Let's edit that. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, anyway, wow. Well, uh, maybe out, like lads. Maybe yes. we should get a Google Doc. <laughs> maybe we should start taking this shit seriously. That would be great. Uh, but right. yeah, ch- check us out for for more of the same. We'll have we have most of our regular content locked in though, and keep an eye out in the future for future wrestling starting very very soon. So until then, guys, thanks for watching. We've been nerds. That's been Jonathan. That's been Foxy, and I've been Amy. Yeah. Wow, she got- Wow. 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 Wow.